the Atlantic Coast Conference, and we welcome you to what is uh, rainy and windy Pittsburgh at Acrisur Stadium tonight for ACC Network primetime coverage. The defending champions play their first conference game. Number 24, Pitt, welcomes Georgia Tech inside Acrisur Stadium. And great to be with Roddy Jones, West Durham. Taylor Davis joins us from the sideline here in just a moment. The news in the ACC this week in football was really kind of created in Atlanta. Monday afternoon, Georgia Tech confirmed what had been speculated since their loss at UCF, and that is that Dr. Angel Cabrera, the president, dismissed head football coach Jeff Collins and athletics director Todd Stansberry. So Georgia Tech starts from scratch tonight, but for Collins, three and a quarter years, Roddy, just never kind of created the momentum that was hopeful. Yeah, and it was always going to be a tough task following Paul Johnson transitioning this roster from the triple option to something more mainstream. And when Jeff Collins got hired, he knew what he was taking on. Did an excellent job of rebranding the program after he was hired in December of 2018 from Temple, but the wins just never followed. Never won consecutive games, and after a string of defeats to FBS schools that were right. quite honestly a little embarrassing, he was let go by Angel Cabrera this week. And so now it's about a new path forward for Georgia Tech. They're going to have to figure a lot of stuff out in short order, but today it's about Brent Key and this football team playing Pittsburgh. The fifth alum ever to coach the Yellow Jackets is Key, who was a terrific player in the George O'Leary era and now gets the whistle tonight. Well, you mentioned the George O'Leary era. He kind of made his coaching chops under Coach O'Leary and then under Nick Saban at Alabama. There's no nonsense here, no frills. He is getting back down to the fundamentals. And as you said, Wes, like me, he's an alum of Georgia Tech. He cares deeply about this school and feels like his team just needs a little bit of the things good happening for them in order to get on the right track. Well, we'll see what happens. Georgia Tech's at one end of the spectrum. Meanwhile, the defending champs, they've got method, they've got culture, and Roddy, they got a talented running back. They certainly do. It's been tried and true here in Pittsburgh. Running the football <laughs> seems to be what they do. And they're back to that this year with Israel Abanacanda. Coming into the year, it was about Shipley and Tucker. And we didn't really know how the running back room at Pitt was going to shake out. But over the last few weeks, this has become Israel Abanacanda's team. And one of the big reasons that he's been so successful are these big long runs. So let's take a look at the anatomy of an Izzy Abanacanda long run. It starts at the point of attack. It's a zone scheme that backside H back is going to go out to the flat, taking the outside linebacker, but the offensive line opens up the hole. Then it's up to Izzy. Use your athletic ability, be elusive in the open field, make a man miss. Receivers aren't just for catching the ball in this offense. You got to block downfield, gets an excellent block, and then it's something that very few people have, Wes. It can't be taught. It's all about the speed down the field. Gets up to almost 25 miles an hour. That'd be speeding in a school zone. Israel Abanacanda's big, strong, and fast, and that's a really good combination. Leads the ACC in rushing, Taylor. He's sixth nationally. We know a lot about him on the field. What do we need to know about him off the field? Well, actually, Wes, that speed that you guys just mentioned is actually something he says he got from his dad, Sadie, who is in attendance here today. And, guys, he actually ran track and walked on the football team at Georgia Tech. We've got a little family competition going in this one, but I talked to Izzy this week, and he told me he always knew he was capable of this. It was just about taking advantage of the opportunity, and he's done just that. Keep in mind, guys, this offense was not expected to have a featured running back like this with guys like Rodney Hammond and Daniel Carter. But after three straight games of over 100 rushing yards, he's become the workhorse of this team. And it may have surprised some people, but not him. And guys, with this steady rain that I am thoroughly enjoying, maybe another big night for Abanacanda. Well, Georgia Tech won the toss, Taylor, elected to receive. And away we go from Pittsburgh, and there'll be no return for Hassan Hall. So Brent Key, an old offensive lineman in every sense of the word, the interim head coach, 42 years of age out of Clay, Alabama, with the offensive coordinator at Georgia Tech, Chip Long, is going to send Jeff Sims out tonight to make his 21st start. And in his last two games, Roddy, the sophomore from uh, Jacksonville is hitting 61% of his passes, averaging about seven and a half yards of attempt, and comes off a 300-yard game last Saturday in Orlando. One of the most physically talented quarterbacks in the ACC, and there's been a lot of improvement this year, especially with the short throws. Hall is the back with Sims. First throw of the game is almost intercepted by Eric Hallett. Looking for Nate McCollum in front of the Pittsburgh bench. And the calling card of this Pittsburgh team 
Roddy, that back end of veteran players. It's a great break by Eric Howard, who just can't rein in the wet ball. It almost certainly would have been a pick six, something that Jeff Sims threw early in this game a year ago. Blitz coming from Kamara and an overthrow of Hassan Hall on second down. Bengali Kamara, Kamara who had a impact early in the win last week against Rhode Island, back to work on the press there. And all of a sudden it's third and ten, right? Coming completely unblocked off the edge. And now Pitt's able to get in their exotic packages. Georgia Tech really struggled last week against UCF when they had all these bodies around the line of scrimmage, sorting it out and picking it up. Panthers have full steam tonight in their defensive front here. Sims breaking away. Pressure coming. That is Cancy trying to chase. Deslin Alexander going to shove him out of bounds. But I believe he got the 10 and a first down for Jeff Sims in Georgia Tech. It's pretty fortunate he got the first down there. I mean, he's looking at the stick at the first down marker. Gets out in the open field. And this is where he's really dangerous. Just outruns Alexander. Goes out right at the marker. It's great awareness. So Brent Key's team who's only converting 29% of their third downs, 10 of their last 31, hits a third and 10 there. And now on the first carry, Hassan Hall taken down back at the line of scrimmage. David Green fought through to be the first guy in the backfield, and then it looked like Servasi Dennis finished it off for Pitt. Chip Long, his offense has a dedication to the run. He said this week, you've got to find some way to run the football. Pitt is determined not to let you do it, but Georgia Tech has to at least try. Sims again for Hall. And he's going to get seven, eight, and second effort. Roddy got him nine. Good hard run by the Louisville transfer before Brandon Hill the tackle. It's a pretty good job by the interior of that offensive line. Jordan Williams on the edge as well. Got a nice block. To created a third and short for Georgia Tech. Yep. Motion to Syracuse transfer Luke Benson. There goes Malachi Carter and Sims plunges for the first down. Really good surge there by the center, Weston Franklin, kind of leading that, opening up a gap. And, and that big first down, that first first down that Jeff Sims was able to get. Right. When you have an offense that struggled the way Georgia Tech has, either struggling to move the football or struggling to put it in the end zone, early success I think is crucial for a unit like that. Fresh set of downs. And now a play in the backfield. Pittsburgh blew up a handoff for Hassan Hall. We expect to see Dante Smith and others tonight in the run game. Devin Danielson made the play for Pittsburgh. He's back in the lineup tonight. By the way, Paul Donato's back in the game, and so is Desmond Alexander, who you talked about earlier. Yeah, watch Devin Danielson just powers into the backfield and blows that play up all by himself. Really good individual effort. Second and 11 for the Jackets. Kamara again flushes Sims to his right, launching it downfield, and a terrific catch. Oh, my goodness. E.J. Jenkins hauls in a throw from Jeff Sims to the pit, 22-yard line. It's a great job by Jeff Sims. Hassan Hall completely whiffs on the block. It's a perfect throw to the back shoulder of E.J. Jenkins, and that's as good a catch as you'll see with one hand. 33-yard throw to Jenkins. Jackets to the line quickly on the opening drive. Sims going to throw for the end zone again. And Jenkins, the intended target, Marquez Williams, defending for the Panthers. These defensive backs for Pitt, the corners in particular, Marquez Williams, MJ Devonshire, and A.J. Woods, they're very scrappy players, but they're on the smaller side, especially when compared to a big receiver in E.J. Jenkins. Think back to what Cedric Tillman and, and Bryce Ford Wheaton, the success that they had against these guys. Bigger receivers, there's some plays to be had. Bunch look to the left for Georgia Tech. Second down and 10. Sims wants to throw it again out of the backfield. That's Hall, and he got blasted by Brandon Hill. Right at the 20-yard line. Third down will be the next snap. Roddy, the physicality that Randy Bates, the defensive coordinator, and Pat Narduzzi's defense brings to the table here is really good. It's a good job. The guys in the yellow hats. Yeah, it's a good job recognizing the corner blitz by Jeff Sims. BJ, or Brandon Hill, one of the best tackling safeties in the entire league. And with Georgia Tech struggles kicking field goals, you'd have to imagine if they can get it to a, a fourth and short, it'd be a situation where Brinkie would think about going for it. Here is Sims. Third down. Looks again and offline intended for Jenkins. 
Jenkins had been relatively quiet, to be honest with you, in the Georgia Tech pass game since a three for 34 in touchdown performance in the opener against Clemson. And he's a big receiver, but he's still developing. Was playing at St. Francis in, Pit in Pennsylvania a few years ago. Spent a year at South Carolina, still getting accustomed to, to creating separation against Power 5 cornerbacks. Well, one of the changes Brent Keyes made, Gavin Stewart will try his fifth career field goal. He was two for three two years ago. This kick is away from 37, and it is good. So Gavin Stewart, who had not converted a field goal since hitting from 26 and 22 at NC State two seasons ago, puts Georgia Tech on the board first in Pittsburgh. Well, Brent Key, in his first game as the interim head coach at his alma mater, see them go 12 plays, 55 yards and 346, and take a 3-0 lead, Roddy, on a field goal, which had been a struggle point, quite frankly. Yes, it had. But the conversions on third downs, Jeff Sims made some great throws. E.J. Jenkins big on that drive, and Georgia Tech on the board. Here is a Banacanda off the Stewart kick at the 10. Is he 15? 25 into the 27 goes Israel Labanacanda. On top of his rushing statistics, he's seventh in the ACC in kickoff returns. And now Keaton Slovis' 30th career start, Roddy. And back in action last week against Rhode Island and anxious to see him tonight in his ACC debut. I am as well. It's your eye. He certainly wasn't the headliner, but he was 20 of 27 on the day an incredibly accurate thrower but this is an offense that's sort of been redefined under first year offensive coordinator Frank Signetti Jr. by running the football as their personality. Havana Kanda the lone back. Play fake by Slovis. Keaton hit as he throws and incomplete and took a massive shot from Daquan Douse. The redshirt sophomore from Savannah. Forward pass. Second down. That is a little wake me up for Keaton Slovis. It certainly is. And I thought he had Jared Wayne on the little dig route coming across. Just couldn't pull the trigger there. Didn't like what he saw. Held on the ball too long. That ball's supposed to be out at the top of that drop. Yep. Fortunate to get it away before Douse pummeled him. See the pressure numbers. Tonight they play without Carter Warren at the left tackle spot. Branson Taylor, who appeared in 12 games last year. Big sophomore draws the start. Slovis rips one across the middle, in and out of the hands, and incomplete for Jaden Bradley. And the Georgia Tech player is shaking up on the play. Hits him right in the number seven, right in the chest. No, he never had control of it. It's a good call by the by the officials. And, and this is, uh, we talked about their commitment to the run. I just talked about it. Uh, Frank Signetti Jr. was very aware that his tendencies are all out of whack. I mean, the amount that he's run the ball, it throws everything out of whack. So two throws back to back, two incompletions, and now Pitt's got a third and ten. Yep. Three receivers and a band of candle with Slovis here. Straight drop, pressure coming, and Slovis again will try the ball. Got tipped at the line of scrimmage, so there won't be any pass interference on Miles Sims. Officiating crew with the deflection signal right away. So three and out go the Panthers very quickly on three pass attempts, Roddy. But once again, pressure right up the middle. It was indeed, Tip, looked like on the right side of your screen. Number two, Ace Ely gets a hand on that ball. So all bets are off from a contact standpoint. A really good start for Georgia Tech. Comes out, drives the ball in 12 plays, and then forces a three and out for Pitt. And here is Nate McCollum. Averaging 17 yards a return, only on four punts, though. And the punt by Vanderhaar. McCollum's going to let it hit, and it will take a Georgia Tech bounce toward the 37. Well, about five minutes gone in the opening period. Georgia Tech, with Brent Key at the wheel, leads 3-0. Well, just a moment ago, what a special moment this is to get to see the legendary Bobby Greer, who was named the honorary captain this week by Pat Narduzzi in Pitt's athletic department, a standout player for the Panthers in the 1950s, who's most widely known for desegregating the Sugar Bowl in 1956 when the game was played in New Orleans against Georgia Tech. And the crowd here at Acrisure Stadium also found out that a motion picture, Roddy, starts in early 2023 
about the story of the great Bobby Greer. Cannot wait to see the movie. It's so important that we continue to honor living people who broke barriers to allow a lot of these guys to play. Here is Hassan Hall on Georgia Tech's second possession, and Servasi Dennis wraps him up after about a yard on the play. Had a chance a few years ago to meet Mr. Greer. What a real honor and treat to talk to a gentleman who paved the way for so many, right? Yeah, you're exactly right. And and the untold story, the, the, the stuff that's tough to tell or is just what he had to overcome to do it. Yep. I hope the uh, motion picture, picture sheds light on that. Georgia Tech with a 3-0 lead after a 12-play drive resulted in a field goal. Second possession for Sims and the Jackets, and that's going nowhere. Boy, Devin Danielson didn't play last week, and he's making up for lost time early. You're going to see Devin Danielson right here. He's just going to throw the guard to the side and go back and tackle Hassan Hall. He has had himself a time here early on. And again, Pitt going to get into that third down package. We'll be interesting to see if they leave Servasia Dennis in the middle of the field to try and spy on Jeff Sims. Cancy, Morgan, Maloney, the three down linemen. Snap to Sims. Here comes Canty. Hit as he throws, and Hallett almost had a second one. Trying to dial McCollum on the far side of the field, and Eric Hallett has had two go through his hands. Eric Hallett picks this off and stays on his feet. He's probably got a chance to score again. The other one was a pick six coming right downhill. See, they went into a deep cover three with two under. Savassier Dennis actually ended up being the deep safety. So Hallett and Hill are playing in sort of those little pockets underneath. Hallett reads it well, just can't finish the play. David Shanahan averages 44 yards a punt. MJ Devonshire ran one back last week against Rhode Island for a touchdown. Devonshire off the scoop at the 19, trying to get to the far side. And he'll be helped out of bounds near the 26 27 yard line so about five and change gone and Taylor Keaton Slovis after a balky little three and out in the Panthers first possession ready for another line of duty here. Yeah guys I spoke with Slovis this week just about the transitional period that he's been in here at Pitt he said look I've worked hard on things like footwork and fundamentals and understanding but in game you have to find the team strengths you have to learn tendencies what's it going to look like what they want to call in certain situations he said having those opportunities or maybe a couple weeks ago not having it it's kind of slowed the pass game progress a little bit but Weather permitting, they hope to see that expand a little bit, but he credits uh, Signetti a lot for his understanding of this offense. First down play, and Daniel, or Keaton Slovis, hands to Israel Abanacanda. Roddy's favorite player early in the ACC has emerged into the lineup, by the way, and that is Daniel Carter, the fullback blocking back for Israel Abanacanda. Well, Wes, you, you know when you see, you go to the, you, you, you hear about an, uh, a, an animal that's like near extinct almost, like yeah. fullbacks are nearly extinct, Wes, so when you see one in the wild, <laughs> you gotta make, gotta make sure people know. Vincent Davis has come in the ball game too, the second running back, but he's flexed here to the near side. That's Davis in motion on second and eight. Slovis. Flips it back and caught on the deflection. Was that Bartholomew or incomplete? It's ruled a catch. Ryan Jacoby, 84, not 86. Bartholomew the ground at the 31. If, if Ryan Jacoby looks like he catches and secures it like an offensive lineman, it's because he is. He's just a big tackle that they put 84 on. They use him in blocking situations mostly, but nice job by the big fella wrangling it. This is third and five, and Roddy... The Panthers a little uh, rusty offensively. I think it's just been a little bit of a slow start. There's no rhythm to what they're doing right now, but going with four wide receivers here. Jackets bringing the house, and Mumfield took a big lick from LaMiles Brooks on a ball at the 35, and Pittsburgh goes three and out again. Brooks was sitting right there. Kind of reading the eyes of Keaton Slovis. Once again, pressure in his face. Kyle Kennard coming free on a little bit of a twist from the end spot. Brooks does a good job of going through to break up the pass. There's 25-year-old Sam Vanderhaar to punt it again. Another Aussie punter in the Pittsburgh program. Kirk Christodoulou, of course, handled those duties for so many seasons here. 
Vanderhaar flips this one over. And a fair catch asked for by Nate McCollum. So, Georgia Tech still protecting a 3 0 lead. We're midway through quarter one. ACC Network Primetime continues in a moment. Georgia Tech three pit nothing. ACC huddle post game tonight, Roddy. Huddle after dark. Eddie Royal in for Eric McLean tonight. Jordan Cornett, EJ Manuel, Coach Rick. A full menu of ACC play to recap following our broadcast here tonight from Pittsburgh. Third series for Georgia Tech off its 27 and a mix up on the exchange. Almost bounced to Haba Baldonado, but Malachi Carter, I think, was the intended recipient. Georgia Tech has really dodged disaster early in this game. The fumble goes out of bounds. Fortunately, Pitts had two interceptions go through the hands of Eric Hallett. So three series and three aversions of disaster from this Georgia Tech offense. Nate McCollum almost cost his team second down and long. And here's Sims in trouble. And that is David Green swinging into the turf. Now, if you're Georgia Tech, you just want some room for your punter to operate. Pitt's almost certainly going to drop into coverage. But the twist brings David Green all the way around, forces Jeff, Jeff Sims to have to run. Eventually able to wrangle him in. This defensive line of Pittsburgh has been really good early on. Third and 23 for Georgia Tech. Sims. Tries to break up field and took a big shot from Dennis. Almost back to the original line of scrimmage at the 25. Another three and out for the Jackets. Well, he gets some room, and they got off a clean punt last time. As you see, Jeff Sims almost looked like a design draw for the quickness that he took off. But this is still a Georgia Tech team that's had four punts blocked this season, Wes, which, to nobody's surprise, is the most in the country. Pitch surely aware of it. The previous play is under further review for possible targeting. That is referee Gary Patterson. First time we've heard from referee Patterson tonight. MJ Devonshire. There's Brent Key. It was a big hit by Servassier Dennis. Okay. Jeff Sims. Jeff Sims is a runner in this situation, so it has to be contact with the crown of the helmet. And Wes, this does not look like, after those two shots, it doesn't look like crown of the helmet. The crown of the helmet has been redefined this year. It's not just going from the, from the top of the face mask around the top of the helmet. It's a six inch radius from the very top. And I think Servassier Dennis, it's more with the front of the helmet than it is the, the crown. So I would imagine that this would be the, the decision on the field to not call targeting would be upheld. Replay officials Jack Kramer. Targeting on the previous play. Four foul. There you have it. Now remember Georgia Tech, one of their top linebackers, Charlie Thomas, is not allowed to play in the first half because of a second half targeting in Orlando last week. Right. And Thomas, that's his second targeting call of the year. And he'll play in half two here tonight at Acrisure State. Shanahan to punt it to Devonshire. It came after it. MJ at the 32. Tried the narrow side on the boundary and got taken down at the 39 yard line. Under six to go, 42 yard punt and a five yard return. Dylan McDuffie, by the way, downfield on the punt cover, one of Brent Key's running backs. And here's a pit offense, Roddy, that in two, three and outs, has run it just one time and thrown it five times. Yeah, and, and look, I understand Fran Signetti wanting to do something different than what Georgia Tech expects. But this is a Georgia Tech team that's 13th in the conference and 121st in the nation in rush defense. They've given up the last two weeks 284 yards to Ole Miss, 316, excuse me, 316 to Ole Miss, 284 to UCF. Pitt needs to run the football. Three tight ends on the field for Slovis, and we got movement. Ball start. Ball start. Number 84. 84. Offense. Five yard penalty. Still first down. And that's Ryan Jacoby, who Roddy told you about earlier, the converted offensive guard now playing at tight end. Even went up 23 numbers 
to get it. <laughs> yes, 61 did. to 84. And this was one of Pat Narduzzi's concerns yesterday, right? Sluggish start. You know, other teams going to have a little steam with all the things that have happened around them. Rally to the interim coach type deal. And it, now it you're was. behind the stick on first down. Yeah, and I would still expect him to run the football here. Slovis going to throw it. Checks it out in the flat. Vincent Davis. And he will get it back to the original line before he is shoved out of bounds. Second in the full 10 on Kyle Kennard stop. It's a good check down by Keaton Slovis. But this is a pit receiver group that's mostly unproven. After the exodus of, of Jordan Addison, Jared Wayne is a is a is a very good receiver, but as a number one guy, hasn't proven himself to be certainly fill the void there. The strength of this team is that experienced offensive line in Israel Abanikan. Here is the toss and Abanikan to trying to get to the edge and gonna lose some ground. Great run pursuit. Ace Ely led the charge for Georgia Tech. And also Kari G, Roddy, the Notre Dame transfer from Atlanta. Ely just goes underneath the block of Gavin Bartholomew and is able to make the play. And Pitt has struggled to protect Keaton Slovis in these situations. This is a Georgia Tech defense that moves a lot on the defensive line, especially on third downs. And Pitt has struggled to pick up the twists and stunts. How about Ace Healy? He's top 20 in all those categories we just showed you. Off to a fantastic start. Slovis, third in the full 10. Pumps, now pulls it back, and he's going to be sacked. Sylvain Yunjuan makes the stop, Roddy, and a guy who's really kind of been coming on here in the last couple weeks. Yunjuan is, is, is a player from Belgium, so still learning the game. But, man, he has such upside. Does a good job of powering around and pursuing Keaton Slovis. And look, when you pull up the film of Georgia Tech, there's a few guys on that defense that pop. When 32's in the in the game, you almost feel his strength and motor. Vanderhaar's third punt in his many possessions, and it will be down inside the 30-yard line. Under four to go now in this first period, and Jeff Sims brings Georgia Tech back out, Taylor. Yeah, guys, I've been watching him over here on the Georgia Tech sideline. He's got such a calm demeanor. And keep in mind, he's coming off his best game of the season last week against UCF, 314 yards. And offensive coordinator Chip Long told us there's been a difference in him this week. You can tell that he's built some confidence. And they told him to be greedy this week. They said build on that success and lead this team. With all the question marks surrounding it, they need him to play that way. First and 10. Looking back to the left and off the hands. <laughs> and that was Tyler Wiltz, who almost came up of the third pit interception. It, it's, it's, this is now the fourth drive, and Pitts dropped three interceptions, and a fumble in Georgia Tech's backfield is spun out of bounds. Jeff Sims really playing with fire here early, and it's been the underneath defenders that it feels like he hasn't seen. He was under pressure, but that's one that you need to throw away or just eat as a quarterback. Dylan McDuffie's in the backfield with Sims. Benson, the tight end, in motion. Sims going to throw again. This time it is Luke Benson on the far side, and he will be close to the first down. A flag has been thrown in from... Deep center field in the secondary. A.J. Woods, the tackle of Benson, the Syracuse transfer. Gary Patterson. There is no foul for offensive pass interference. The pass, the first touch behind the line of scrimmage. So now third and short for Georgia Tech. It's a really good design by Chip Long. The crack by by the outside receiver E.J. Jenkins brings in the corner. I don't know that that was thrown behind the line of scrimmage either. I don't either. In fact, the play's under review. And Roddy, I think right, your so point. It sounds like it's going to be it's going to be OPI. It's going to be OPI. And Gary just he pressed the uh, pressed the wrong button there, Mr. Patterson. I think I think Mr. Patterson is going to check to see if they're behind the line, but you already know he thinks it might be offensive pass interference. He with just the told you. Microphone there. Another look. Benson goes out. He starts the line of scrimmage. Yeah, he's in front. Yeah, he's in front of the line of scrimmage. The line of scrimmage is what? What's that, the 27-yard yeah, line? Yeah. Thank you for doing the math for me with the tick marks. 
catches it at about the 28. <laughs> EJ Jenkins got there a little too early. It's, it's that's sort of it's one of those timing routes that you'd like for Benson to catch it right before EJ Jenkins makes the contact. Uh, but unfortunately, timing just a little off there. It's a good play design because the way Pitt plays, the corner is always going to fall in with a with a receiver going in like that. So this one uh, looks like it's going to come After back. further review, it was determined that the ball was first touched beyond the line of scrimmage. Therefore, pass interference, offense, zero. Half the distance to the goal. Repeat second down. It'll be second down at the 13 and a half yard line. All right, so offensive pass interference on EJ Jenkins here. Yeah, you're going to see Jenkins come down and crack. And the key is if the ball is thrown past this yard, excuse me, the the 27 yard line right here, then it's pass interference. If that contact happens before the ball is caught, it clearly happens before the ball is caught. When that ball is touched and he's past the line of scrimmage, it's automatically offensive pass interference. So it's a tough break for Georgia Tech. EJ Jenkins and that the timing with Luke Benson just a little bit off on that play. You know all about the crack blocks, too, don't you? You know how exactly it was one work. of my least favorites, especially with Cam <laughs> Chancellor. Chancellor. I was getting ready to say, maybe we'll have a moment to talk about the nightmare that Cam Chancellor was for you. Here is Sims, deep drop, deep ball out in front of the Georgia Tech benches, well overthrown of Nate McCollum with Brandon Hill in coverage. That first drive, Georgia Tech is, this pit defense has really settled down. Jeff Sims' legs were honestly the biggest right. helper on that first drive. Picks up the third and long, uh, the third and ten on the on the first three plays of the game. And then even on the throw to E.J. Jenkins, there was a scramble there to get him away from pressure. Two of five on third down is Georgia Tech. Sims going to keep it to the left side. And. Eric Hallett will take him down at the 20. Another three and out for Georgia Tech. And the Jackets have posted three straight three and outs. They were two of their first two. And Roddy, they're now 0 for 4 after that. This pit defense has really sort of settled into the football game. And, and a lot of times, Pitt's defense kind of struggles on the first couple drives of the game. They play a unique style, so they get different stuff from different teams. A little high, but Shanahan got her way. Here comes a flag. Devonshire the return, likely to be a roughing penalty on Pittsburgh. MJ Devonshire out of a couple tackles, turns it back. Another flag thrown out of bounds near midfield. Flags everywhere. We got one on the punt and about three in the middle of the field at the 50. I imagine that they're all on Pittsburgh, to be honest with you, the and way that. Shanahan a little shaken up on the jog off across the way as Gary Patterson and his group try and sort this out. Be interesting to see. I, I would imagine that this is going to be a running into the kicker, the lesser variety. Hmm. Here's referee Patterson. There are two fouls on the play during the return. Illegal block in the back. Number 41 return team. That penalty declined. Personal foul. Roughing the kicker. Defense. 15 yard penalty. Automatic first down. You were right, Wes. Roughing the kicker. Javon Lewis. It. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's. Run right into the kicker like that, and yeah, that'll get you the that'll get you the roughing. PJ O'Brien, I think. So gonna, Georgia Tech gets new life, Roddy. It's going to put Georgia Tech's offense back on and see if they can get anything going. Twelve plays on that first drive. They've had twelve plays since. It's been three and outs. Taylor talked about Jeff Sims' confidence, Roddy. You mentioned his ability to run and make plays in almost like improv, right? How much of that's got to be factored into what Chip Long calls here, though? Because the structured stuff, and here's a quarterback sweep on first down, and Sims will be taken out by A.J. Woods across the way. It's a run of about five on first down. Once again, they go condensed formation. They crack E.J. Jenkins, and it brings the corner down so they can get around him. Uh, but but to, your, to your question, Wes, Chip Long's going to have to find something with, the, what, with what Jeff Sims is comfortable with. I think he's made the most improvement this year with his accuracy and the short passes. Pitt doesn't give you those short passes. And when he's tried to throw them on like a little out route, 
Pitt's been all over it. They're going to sit on those short routes and make Jeff Sims throw it over their head. Hassan hauled into the backfield. You saw the Panthers get Devin Danielson on the field. Take David Green out. They're going to toss it to Hall right side. Hassan Hall, who's got terrific speed, knocked out of bounds by Brandon Hill, the safety in front of Georgia Tech's bench. It'll be enough for a first down. It's a nice job by Dylan Leonard, number two, the tight end. You're going to see him right here. He's going to come out and throw a block on Hobble Ball Donato. Sort of seal the edge. Let Hassan Hall get up the field. Dylan Leonard and Haba Baldonado are two of the ACC's 14 semifinalists for the Campbell Trophy. Here's Sims sacked. That is Kalaja Kansi. And I don't know what job one is for Brent Key and Chip Long, but eight has got to be near the head of the list. He certainly does. It's just an arm over move against Joe Fusil. Beats him right off the block, and the one of the best defensive tackles in the ACC is a tough draw for anybody. Kalaja Kansi made it look easy there. Second down and long. Sims wants to run. Back here to the near side, and he will get out of bounds near the 42. Alexander, Kamara, all in high-speed pursuit of Jeff Sims. And another third and long. We're outside of Sims' legs. I mean, Georgia Tech really hasn't gotten anything going. I wonder if, if you're Georgia Tech, if you don't just run Sims here, or, or think they're going to let the quarter run out. Yep. If they can think about it. They'll snap it. They do. Well, the whistle blows first. Kamara and Baldonado were right there, though. The way, so. the way that was looking, they got fortunate that the yeah, quarter was maybe, called. Maybe it's a good thing they did blow the whistle, Jeff. <laughs> well, Brent Key's team took the opening possession and drove the field for a field goal. And it's our only points through one quarter. And we're going right to quarter two here at Akershire Stadium. Great to be with Roddy Jones, Taylor Davis, West Durham. You see Georgia Tech with a 3-0 lead on Pittsburgh. Jeff Sims in the Jackets, third down and 15. Hassan Hall in the backfield with the sophomore quarterback. Sims in trouble, sacked. Solomon DeShields, second sack of the year. Going to get a little game here. The Shields is going to wrap in. You're going to get Cansey coming out, and it frees him up right up the middle. Excuse me, that was John Morgan coming on the outside, but Georgia Tech doesn't doesn't sort out the game played by the end and the tackle. Jeff Sims was a sitting duck there in the pocket. Mm. Another sack for the Panthers. Shanahan, a liner that's going to bounce in front of Devonshire. MJ trying to get to the near side. There's a flag. There's two flags. Devonshire at the 35 and ruled out of bounds. Well, the momentum of the play got the Panthers there, Roddy. 45-yard punt, 16-yard return, but that'll come back. And there's there's flags. There's a flag down near the 40-yard line near where they punted it. There's flags down the field. I think you could have three different calls on, on the return team here by Pitt. Brent Key's going to have his choice of what he wants to go with. So Georgia Tech, who had the drive extended on a penalty, ended up three and out on that after the continuation. They're 0 for their last five third downs. And here's Gary Patterson's team. And Pat Narduzzi at 56 years of age is fired up and ready to roll here. Early second quarter. A lot going on. Here's referee Patterson. We have two fouls on the play, both against the return team. Holding. Number seven, that penalty's declined. We had a legal block in the back by the return team. That 10-yard penalty will be enforced from the 25-yard line, first and 10. Well, the pit defense kind of carrying the load here, Taylor, with sacks in each of the last two Georgia Tech possessions. 
Yeah, guys, and that's such a key piece of this pit defense. 54 sacks last year, and there's a science to it. Coach Narduzzi told us this week a couple years ago the goal was three sacks per game, but after crunching numbers, they bumped it up to four per game. When this team has had four sacks per game under Narduzzi, they're 29 and five, three or less. 27 and 33. The win chance percentage almost doubles with just one more sack per game, and they're certainly on the way tonight. And Abandon handed the first down carry for a yard, and Georgia Tech is locked in on number two. Jalen King was the first of the Jackets to arrive on Israel Abanacanda, and he is slow to get up. Abanacanda might have lost a shoe. We'll see if comes to the sideline here. I think he needs to relace that. Pitt's going to get into some tempo here. Vincent Davis, who had a career night in Atlanta a couple of years ago in the pistol with Slovis. And here is Vincent Davis. Hurdles through one, two, first down, Pittsburgh. Well, a couple of years ago, Roddy, he went 25 carries, 247, and a touchdown at Grant Field. He had a great game. That was one of those wide zone plays that Pitt has run a lot this year, and Trenelius Tatum, number 40, he got caught out of position there. He's the guy that's in that's replacing Charlie Thomas for the first half. Pitt's best play of the night. Here's Vincent Davis back at it again. Davis. Beyond the 35, I think they'll post him to the 36. It'll be close to another first down. Two best offensive plays of the night have come on the legs of Vincent Davis. And let's roll the flashback, shall we, Roddy? It was lit. Oh, it was lit. 25 for 247. Have a day, Vincent Davis. Ooh. Did in every kind of way. And a couple of big runs here early. Here's second and short. And the young man from Fort Lauderdale, Florida, and Cardinal Gibbons picks up another Panther first down. You know, Wes, Frank Signetti Jr. told us something yesterday that, that I think he himself now is realizing. Running the football sometimes takes patience. Yeah. You got to do it so you can get into a rhythm and those offensive linemen can start to work. And after being somewhat resistant early on, a of nice runs. Davis averaging eight yards a carry and now tries to shift it to the outside and runs right into Miles Sims, the redshirt junior and a transfer from Michigan into this Georgia Tech program. Thought Vincent Davis got a little greedy there. There was a hole there, and Trenelius Tatum was coming from inside out, and I thought he had him beat. Decides to bounce it and didn't quite get enough there. But still a good run. It's pit, it, they're starting to get some some rhythm blocking it up front. Looks like the drizzle is slowed down a little bit here at Akersher in the second quarter of play. And kind of a balky start for the Panthers on offense. And now a penalty. Ball start. Number 68. Offense. Five yard penalty. Still second down. Veteran Blake Zupovic. I like the idea from Pitt going with the hard count. Georgia Tech jumped a number of times a week ago, really struggled holding the water on those hard counts. Fortunately for Pitt, everybody not on the same pitch. So it does into the first down. Slovis just two of six passing so far in this first half. Clock's running down. Don't get it snap. Timeout, Pat Narduzzi. Timeout, Pittsburgh. That's their first charge timeout of the half. Full timeout. So we will step aside as well. 3 0 Georgia Tech. About four minutes gone, second period. Well, we welcome you back. And of course, the Andy Warhol Museum is here, Robbie, in Pittsburgh. What a different look. Did you do that? Andy Warhol. Huh? Did you do that? No, sir. No, we have more talented Creative people than <laughs> to do things like that. Second and a dozen. Trying to get to the perimeter. And Vincent Davis got back inside the first down mark. Micaiah Scott, transfer from South Carolina, made the stop. Young man from Gainesville, Georgia, former Red Elephant. Has there not been a lot of success for Pitt on these third and longs? 
The first step's going to be protecting Keaton Slovis. Georgia Tech, a lot of bodies around the line of scrimmage. Yeah, Pitts hitless in three third down tries. Slovis moving the pocket to his right, going to cut it loose and throw him behind the intended receiver, Bub Means. Keon White, who coaches rave about, pressuring Keaton Slovis. Keon White just drove the tackle right back into the lap of Keaton Slovis. This Georgia Tech defense that really had a, an embarrassing outing against Ole Miss. The past couple weeks has been pretty solid. We're good for the most part against UCF. They've been very good so far early on against Pitt. Seven plays, and here is Vanderhaar from Melbourne, Australia, to punt it away to Nate McCollum. One step left and flips it over toward the near side. And it will roll dead right at the 20 yard line and that's where Georgia Tech will get started on a 39 yard punt. Don't forget Sunday best tomorrow women's soccer and volleyball. Get the triple header for you starting at noon women's soccer from Winston Salem Syracuse Wake Forest and then volleyball takes center stage. Two o'clock start in Raleigh Miami NC State and then at four o'clock Virginia and Duke all right here on ACC Network and streaming live for you on the ESPN app. Off the 20, Dylan McDuffie now in the backfield with Sims in Georgia Tech, who leads 3-0. And McDuffie's first carry to about the 22 and a half before he gets rolled back. Brandon Hill now from the safety spot. Dylan McDuffie, a big back from Buffalo. Yeah. Feels like the type game with a physical Pittsburgh front. Want the sledgehammer in there a little bit. 30 career games with Buffalo over a thousand yards. Now they're gonna try and throw it to him on the wheel and almost picked. Yeah, Looked like it. Shane Simon, the Notre Dame transfer, had a shot. There is a flag at the 28. I think you're gonna get an offensive pass interference again. EJ Jenkins gonna get called. There's no foul for no defensive foul. pass defensive interference. Pass. Third down. Third down. I'm going to call defensive interference. Right, interesting. So you're going to get E.J. Jenkins coming in here, rubbing the tackle, and then a wheel on the outside, and Shane Simon kind of gets caught a little bit. Oh, uh, it's a good job by E.J. Jenkins of not contacting, and the contact was actually the two teammates hitting each other. So a good call on both sides. But Jeff Sims not quite making the throw because he had his receiver down the field. Third down, Sims dropping back, and Kamar got him and sacks him. Third sack of the half for Pittsburgh. Bengali, Kamara, Roddy. Kamara ends up one-on-one -on -one against the tight end, Dylan Leonard. You're going to see Kamara come from the outside. He's standing right about here, and he's going to get one-on-one -on -one with the tight end. Just makes a little move to the outside, slips underneath. And Jeff Sims, once again, no shot getting out of that one. Fourth and 15, Devonshire at the 42, waiting on the punt of Shanahan. MJ backs up from the 34. Trying to get to the near side, comes to a stop. And will work his way back across the 35 before the Jackets, pardon the pun, swarm him. 51-yard punt for Shanahan, and just a brief return for MJ Devonshire. But Bengali Kamara, the sack. Panthers trail 3-0. Well, Pittsburgh enshrined another class into their Hall of Fame last night, and it is a star-studded group of a athletic department that has as much tradition as this one does, including one of the legendary figures in college basketball. Picked off by Miller, goes ahead, lanes on the other wing. He finds oh, the oh, oh, oh! Yeah! Send it in, Jerome! <laughs> One of the great moments in college basketball. Here is a banner, Canada's best run of the night. Out to midfield to get the Panther drive started here. 
that close to breaking it. Looks like Taylor McCauley, the backup linebacker, got a piece of him. Excuse me, that might have been KJ Wallace. So way, it was a really nice open field tackle. Bannock handed to midfield, fresh set of downs for Slovis, and here's Izzy again. Lowers the shoulder and drives for five, maybe a step more toward the 44 of Georgia Tech. And Wes, if you're Pittsburgh at this point, you've you got to make Georgia Tech prove that they can stop this consistently. You started to have some success in the run game, and then the, the, the false start threw them off on the last drive. But Georgia Tech is going to have to prove that they can stop the run. Tatum trying to get a shoe back on before Slova snaps it. Here's a throw and underthrown to Jared Wayne by Keaton Slovis, who is now just two of his first eight tonight. It's a little bit wet out there tonight. The, the rain not coming down as hard as it was earlier in the day, but the grass certainly wet, the ball wet, the throws a little bit off, and then the drop, and you have a third and five after a really good run on first down. Panacanda stays in the backfield with Slovis. Is he trying to get to the left side? Comes to a stop, and Georgia Tech able to get the play. Tornelius Tatum, young man Roddy spoke of a moment ago, started at Notre Dame a year ago in what was just a tough day all around for Georgia Tech, but Tatum getting the draw here tonight because Charlie Thomas cannot play in the first half. Pitt leaving the offense on the field. I expect a hard count, try and get Georgia Tech to jump off sides. That's Bartholomew, the tight end. Snap to Slovis. They're going to handle Banacanda around the edge. First down for Pittsburgh. Samari Walton came up to try and get Izzy to the ground. But number two equal to the task. You get a crack block by Jared Wayne on the outside. You're going to see the back of number five with a nice seal. Samari Walton not quite able to get a Banacanda on the ground before he's able to get the first down. Aggressive play by Pat Narduzzi. I think the reason you do that is because of the way the defense is playing. There's another Abana can to carry. Tried to be patient, Roddy, and wait. Well, they did a terrific job. Daquan Douse, who's called his name a couple different times here in this first half. That's that Zeke Biggers yeah. there. Big Biggers, 341 pounds. They don't get much Biggers. Wow. I don't feel bad about the swarm call at all. Though. Nope. Yeah. Had to match you there. That's oh, my you, game. Oh, you, you took dipped, the lead. You dipped into my game yeah. with the swarm call. Oh, you got the lead on that. <laughs> Second in the full 10. Abana Candle on the run game one more time, and that time fights through an arm tackle. Noah Collins, and the whistles will blow, and third down and five will be the next snap for Pittsburgh. And it's funny you mentioned the Frank Signetti comment about patience because maybe some of it is starting to groove here just a little bit for Pittsburgh in the second quarter. It's also somewhat by necessity. They've been awful when they drop back to pass, so you might as well try and run the ball. We've already gone for a once on fourth down. If you can cut this third down in half, I'd imagine they do it again. 30 yards on nine carries for Abanacanda, who can't get started that time because the Jackets brought Jalen King off the edge. And now fourth down is the play again. Pitt still gained a little bit, maybe a yard. Narduz is going to send out the field goal team. Ben Sauls is going to try a long field goal here. He kicked one as a high schooler from 55 yards. His longest this season, 48, at Western Michigan. And now Pittsburgh going to take a timeout. Pittsburgh. Second timeout of the half. Time out of the half. 30 second timeout. And we will stay here at AccraSure Stadium. Is this a discussion about punt or kick, or is this a discussion about kick a field goal or go for it? I, I think it's more how comfortable are you kicking the field goal. And also, Pat Narduzzi may have seen something that he would love. I thought. Cam guess the holder was set up a little deep on that one. Usually they're at seven yards. He was at eight. That might have been part of it too, but. Taylor, I, I know you have survived the drizzle. Mm -hmm. What about the wind on the playing field? Yeah, so it's really been Russian roulette with the weather. Um, it will be 
really steady rain and then completely stopped. But the wind picked up really probably beginning of the second quarter and we're getting some substantial gusts down here. So right now it's probably the most calm it's been, but give it uh, about one minute and it'll probably change. Well, it's going to change to go for it on fourth down, Roddy. Yeah, he's found our dudes changed his mind. Slovis. That's Mumfield in motion. Georgia Tech brings four. Slovis from the pocket and incomplete. He got hit as he cut it loose. Keon White. Dropped the hammer on Keaton Slovis. And Pittsburgh gives it away on downs with under five to go. And Georgia Tech and Brent Key kind of grinding here in the first half. Pressure on the edge. I believe they called this a fumble on the field, but it'll be Georgia Tech's ball on the left. Well, during the timeout, it was reviewed and called an incomplete pass. So Georgia Tech will scrimmage from its 33, leading 3 0. Sims trying to dig it out, and a big play coming. Quarterback into pit territory, and inside the 30 goes Jeff Sims. He's been the best runner all night for Georgia Tech, was on their first drive that led to the field goal, and this time 42, Roddy. He's been the best runner for either team. Shane Simon gets caught on the fake with his eyes in the backfield, doesn't see the quarterback out the back door. Georgia Tech in business. Ball at the 25, and they go straight ahead. Hassan Hall going to get almost 10. And another Yellow Jacket first down. He'll be just short at the 16. Pitt had really settled down defensively, stopping Georgia Tech. But I like Chip Long coming out and running the quarterback. It's been the best offense they've had all day. The throws have been tough to come by. Protection's been tough. If you're able to get something going with Jeff Sims' legs, it's been really good for him. Second and short here for Georgia Tech. Sims on the keep. And will not get to the 15. It'll be third and one as he gets thrown back by a collection of the Royal Blue Shirts. David Green leading the charge. A Pittsburgh player down. I think that is uh, Green, in fact. So they are out to 10 to the big defensive tackle. David Green, we're back after this. Well, we've got a drizzly, windy, and chilly night here in Pittsburgh, and Georgia Tech's got a lot of momentum. Took the opening possession, Roddy kicked a field goal. Pitt's defense has kind of set the table. Their offense has been a little balky, and now the Jackets on third and short out of the timeout. Dante Smith, the carry, his first action of the night, and he stopped short of the first down. Once what a terrific again. play by Pittsburgh. Once again, it's Bengali Kamara coming off the edge and making a play. Georgia Tech and Ock to kick the field goal, but Kamara knifing inside the block to make the hit on Dante Smith. But we hadn't seen much during this game. First play of the night for the Jackets leading rusher coming in. By the way, it looked like Luke Benson went off with a shoulder. And now here is Gavin Stewart who hit earlier in the game from 37. This is 33 and change. Center of the field. And Stewart pushes it through. Pair of field goals for Georgia Tech after Dante Smith was stopped on third and short. It's just a slant. You're going to see multiple guys come off the edge. And Bengali Kamara just knifes inside the block. A little bit of a slow Get off by Luke Benson, allowed Kamara across his face. It's a really nice play by Pittsburgh. A good call to slant the front, and a good play by Kamara. Stop him on fourth down. And how about the decision during the week? Brent Key takes over, automatically putting his stamp on the program in a number of different ways. But the decision to go to Gavin Stewart right. after the tough outing last week by Jude Kelly changes the kicker, and a couple of field goals have them up. Well, a little bit of adrenaline, a little bit of momentum, Roddy. Jeff Sims has got 83 yards 
He's got 18 more than Pittsburgh has on offense. <laughs> it has been a rough go for this Pitt offense. It's felt disjointed. Been really struggling when they drop back to pass. Sebo Flemister, Vincent Davis deep here on the kick return. 2.50 to go in this first half. Remember, Pitt will get the ball to start the second half, so Pat Narduzzi's got one timeout to go. And his team will go to work at the 25 yard line. They've got time, especially early in the possession, to still run the football to try and get something going. Is so Georgia Tech just able to pin their ears back? It's going to be tough for this pit offense to move the ball. They've struggled blocking them up front, particularly trying to protect Keaton Slovis. We'll see just how much of a struggle Jeff Sims, his last run was almost more than they got right. all day long. Well, and see. Georgia Tech's in a situation defensively, Roddy, where you would think they only get better in half two when Charlie Thomas starts to play. Yeah. Georgia Tech also has three timeouts, so if you're able to get a three and out here, you have a chance to put together another drive. Slovis from an empty set. Quickly the pocket moves. He will launch toward the right side, and that is thrown well behind Bartholomew into the Georgia Tech bench, Taylor. An interesting pit development over here on the sideline. Running back Israel of Anaconda just left the field with trainers. It was very discreet. It happened very quickly. I just happened to see him exiting the field with trainers. So I've been in contact with the staff. They're going to give me updates at halftime, but definitely a prevalent one to be missing. Yep. It's been a tough night for Pitt's offense and a tough night for Abanacanda. Vincent Davis has been their best ball carrier so far in this first half, and he's in the game now. Slovis, quick throw, catch made. Kanate Mumfield. And that'll be third down and short for Pittsburgh. And the Panthers with two and a half to go. Scrimmage from the 32 here, needing three. An interesting decision here by Pat Narduzzi and Franny Signetti. If you throw the ball here and you get an incomplete pass, it's going to stop the clock. Georgia Tech's going to have plenty of time. If you run the ball, even if you don't get it, it'll pull one of Georgia Tech's timeouts. They're going to hand the ball to Davis. Found the cutback, first down for Pittsburgh to the 39. It's also been one of your most effective things to do is run the football. Vincent Davis able to find the hole on the left side of the offensive line and get in. And early in this game, Wes, Keaton Slove has played with two gloves. He's taken the glove on the throwing hand off. First third down conversion of the night for the Panthers. Here's Slovis from the pocket, sets in and throws in. Jared Wayne cannot make the play on the back end in Georgia Tech territory around the 45. It's a really good job by Keaton Slovis. He's got a hand right in his face to deliver an accurate ball to the push of Micaiah Scott. It's right in the hands of Jared Wayne. And we talked about it early on. You want your receivers to step up with your Pittsburgh. Jared Wayne didn't play a week ago against Rhode Island. Looks a little rusty here today. Yep. Second in the full 10 for Pitt. Here's Slovis against a four-man rush. Long throw. Mumfield to catch. It's a first down to midfield. Heck of a throw from Slovis there, Roddy. It's a really good throw because it's got to be over the linebacker but get down quick enough where Mumfield has a chance to get it. So they call hand talent, Wes, the ability to manipulate the football, get it up over the linebacker and down so that your receiver can make a play. You see the clock inside, 90 seconds now, first half. Slovis again, cuts it loose and short of Bartholomew. K.J. Wallace had fired in from the secondary, the Notre Dame transfer from Lovett School in Atlanta. Georgia Tech. Andrew Thacker's done a good job of timing these up, Roddy, from the he perimeter. Has. But up the middle, I mean, Pitt's been getting whipped from these tackles up front. Yep. They have been pushed into the lap of Keaton Slovis constantly. So even without the pressure off the edge, Keaton Slovis has dealt with a lot of trash in his face. Second and ten. That's Mumfield in the orbit. Slovis again in trouble. Throws and the catch. This is Wayne's first grab of the night. He'll be short of the first down to the 44. And a Georgia Tech player shaking up on the play and a flag on a roughing the passer against Keaton. Uh, on pressure against Keaton Slovis for Brent Key's team. Timeout, injured Georgia Tech player. 
has largely been a very clean game for Georgia Tech. Keaton Slovis is wrapped up. I don't know about I don't know about that call. Yeah. He's got him wrapped up. Slovis's momentum is sort of taking him back. He falls over. I I, I don't like that roughing the passer call. I don't I don't think there's much there. Kenny Bennett, the Maryland transfer, ticketed for the penalty. And that's going to put it inside Georgia Tech's 30 with 113 to play. It's a tough break for Georgia Tech, but if you're Pitt, you have to capitalize. I mean, you have been thoroughly outplayed in this game, and yet you still have a chance to go into halftime leading. Brent Key will obviously be frustrated with that, that last call, but I think all in all, he's got to be fairly pleased with the way his team has played, particularly defensively. Akilo Stone, I believe, is the jacket who was shaken up on the play. Retro freshman from Savannah. And so after all of this, Pittsburgh's going to end up riding with the one timeout now. And a buck 13 to go. Slovis, who was two of nine for eight yards tonight, is three of six on this drive for 26. Finally got some momentum. Might want to say he was with the glove prior to this drive. Shotgun snap. Quick throw, wide open. Bartholomew, touchdown, Pitt. I think we've seen the last of the glove. Well, all fans in Pittsburgh, whether you're a Steelers fan, or a Pitt Panther fan. You're accustomed to your quarterbacks in cold weather when it's wet, whether it was Roethlisberger or Pickett wearing two gloves. Keaton Slovis is Keaton one glove, not Kenny two gloves. A great drive by Pitt, a response drive. Take advantage of a penalty by Georgia Tech, put the ball in the end zone, and have an opportunity to go ahead. Ben Sauls. Knuckleballs one through to give the Panthers the lead. Another look at Gavin Bartholomew, second touchdown catch of the year. It's probably the cleanest pocket that Keaton Slovis has had. And once Gavin Bartholomew gets in the open field, you're almost surprised if he doesn't jump over somebody and end up in the end zone at this point. Georgia Tech loses track of the tight end. Probably the best ca pass catcher for Pitt is able to put in the end zone. You know what, Roddy and Taylor? Bartholomew has a special place in his head coach's heart because Gavin Bartholomew was recruited during the pandemic. And Pat Narduzzi wasn't sure about Gavin Bartholomew until they connected one night on a Zoom call and he saw this wonderful head of hair and mustache and kind of all this look. And Narduzzi said, I'm getting this guy to come play for me. Well, he had a full beard. Convince Pat Narduzzi comes from a small school in Pennsylvania, level of competition not the highest, but Alvin <laughs> Bartholomew impressed his coach with a beard, and now he's impressing his coach with his play. Boy, has he ever. Hand over and kick toward Hassan Hall, who will wave it off. And Saul's kick a yard deep in the end zone. So Georgia Tech, Roddy, now back to your point a moment ago. Three timeouts in 64 seconds. Yeah, you've got a minute left. Three timeouts. Your quarterback's legs have been the best weapon. Georgia Tech, at least drop back to pass. Tell Jeff Sims, hey, if, isn't, if it isn't there, take off and run. See what you can get. And see if you can get some momentum on this drive. Georgia Tech's in this thing. So you want to see what they can put together something in a two-minute situation. Eight-play scoring drive for the Panthers. 75 yards, 146. Here is Sims, and thrown behind Malachi Carter. Tyler Wiltz, who started his career originally at Division II Southern Arkansas, Roddy, then went to Missouri State Independence Community College. This is his fourth school. He turns 24 in November. Is that not 21st century? Is that college football 2022? It is. It absolutely is. But it looked like on that play, receiver and quarterback not on the same page on what the hot route was supposed to be. On the perimeter, Hall knocked out of bounds. 
Solomon to Shields. Helped him out, stops the clock under a minute to go. It'll be third down coming up for Georgia Tech. Now you're in a situation if you're Brent Keyes. I almost feel like you have to run the ball here. Pitt's obviously going to call a timeout. But that would be their last, so then you're giving them the ball back if you're not able to get it with under 50 seconds, most likely, and no timeouts. Sims trying to make the quick throw out on the perimeter. Hall held on, got knocked down. And is Pat Narduzzi going to let the clock wind here? 46 seconds. Brandon Hill the hit on Hassan Hall. Timeout. And the timeout call. That's the third and final timeout of the half. Please reset the clock to 48 seconds. 48 seconds. Remember our conversation with Brent Key? Taylor referenced it in the top about kind of sitting around and waiting on something bad to happen. Mm -hmm. This is one of those moments where in the past, Georgia Tech might be waiting on something bad to happen. If he's getting a sea change in their culture and in their thinking, you find out here, don't you? Yeah, uh, I think the ability to block on this punt certainly would help. Pitt came after it just a second ago, and I would imagine they come after it here. But if you're able to get a defensive stop, go down in the half by one, then yeah, absolutely, you know, you're going to be able to rally the troops. It was a pretty safe throw by, by Chip Long and Jeff Sims. They're going to have to block it up on this punt here. Pittsburgh will be out of timeouts. Georgia Tech missed their last eight third down drives. Shanahan drives one toward Devin Shot at the 28. Long run on the turn for MJ Devonshire. Stops at the 35, 40, and out to the 44. 34 seconds to go. There is a marker on the play. 16-yard return, although Devonshire ran about 50 yards to get 16. 44-yard pump by Shanahan. Really good field position for Pitt no matter what. 34 seconds left. A couple of pretty close blocks. Like During the return, the illegal block in the back. Number 37, return team. 10-yard penalty. First down, Pittsburgh. And it's one of those blocks that's unnecessary. Devonshire had him beat. It's one of the bigger guys on the field. You don't have to throw that block. If the punt returner can't make that guy miss, then you need a new punt returner. So what was good field position now turns into not so good field position. And take a knee and go to the house. I would here. imagine you would take a knee and, and, and call it. Yep. But it's been an interesting first half. I mean, Pitt kind of came to life offensively towards the end there. But Georgia Tech really outplayed him in, in both phases. And that'll be it. So we saw Israel Abanacanda go to the locker room early here before the end of the half. Slovis threw the touchdown pass, his third of the year to Bartholomew to give Pittsburgh the lead in a 7-6 ball game here at Akershire Stadium, Roddy. Just like we thought, low scoring affair. Defensive. I think the performance of the Jackets early, particularly on the defensive side of the football, is probably the story. Both defenses having a lot of success. We'll see how Brent Key feels about it. Here's Taylor. Thanks, guys. All right, Coach, how would you assess your defense's ability to keep Pitt contained in that first half? Yeah, well, we I mean, obviously we put them in some bad positions on offense, so they're doing, doing a really good job. Gave up the last play on the, uh, on the route, in the, uh, going down to the red area. Had a mental bust there, but uh, other than that, they've been playing really good, getting pressure on the quarterback, affecting the quarterback on the, uh, in the passing game. Your quarterback, Jeff Sims, has been effective with his legs. How can you expand on that offensively? Well, obviously, it starts up front. I mean, we, we got to start blocking people up front. I mean, whether whether we're running draws, whether we're running uh, protection, we got we got to we got to bow up and get their, get them blocked up front, so we can have some efficiency on first down and be able to move the chains and get eat some time up off some time up off the clock, keep the defense off the field. Thanks for the time. All right, Taylor. Thank you. Thanks to Brent Key. 7-6 ball game. Slovis to Bartholomew, the difference at the break. Jordan Cornette is next with the ACC huddle. CC Network prime time. We are in Pittsburgh tonight. Number 24 Pitt leads Georgia Tech as we get ready for the second half by a score of 7-6. And welcome back upstairs. West Durham with Roddy Jones. Taylor Davis joins us here in just a moment. 
as we start the second half. Uh, Brent Key, interim head coach, named Monday afternoon, brings a team here, talking about the little things and not a win-loss situation. By golly, they've played great here in the first half, given the given the landscape, Roddy. Yeah, they certainly have, and they've especially played really well on the defensive side of the ball. That defensive line has done a great job of getting pressure on Keaton Slovis really all day. They've only got one sack on the day, but Keaton Slovis has not felt comfortable in the pocket really at all. Saw Sylvain Jew in there. It's been hits over and over and over. The receivers haven't been creating separation, but especially up the middle, the pressure on Slovis has been constant, West Only 123 yards for Pitt's offense in the first half. That's a testament to that defensive line. And it wasn't until late in the first half that Pittsburgh found some offensive momentum, and it's our New York Life Drive recap. And it came from Vincent Davis, a Banacanda shaken up, and then Slovis finishes to Bartholomew at the end for the score. The good news was that 123 yards in the first half. The bad news for Georgia Tech is 75 of them came on this drive. Keaton Slovis did finally get some protection, found some rhythm in the pocket, and then a strike down to Gavin Bartholomew, who was kind of lost in coverage, got them in the end zone. So even though this offense wasn't able to get much going, even though Georgia Tech really outplayed Pitt for the better part of the first half, Pitt, with that touchdown at the end, able to go into halftime up by one. And now the Panthers will get the kick to start the second half. And Sebo Flemister is going to be deep, along with Vincent Davis for the Panthers. And Gavin Stewart will kick it away for the Jackets. And Stewart going to hang this high and off the two. Here's Flemister. 10, 15, and rolled out to about the 23-yard line. And let's check with Tyler Davis. Well, guys, I spoke with Pat Narduzzi at halftime, and he said, frankly, we're not playing good football on either side. Defensively, he said, we gave up some explosives. And look, they knew Jeff Sims was a capable runner, and they've got to key in on that and contain him better. And then offensively, he said, we didn't find a rhythm. He said, we found it a little bit toward the end, obviously, ending it in the end zone. But he said, Keaton has to be protected better. He has to see things and make quicker decisions. Now, I did ask for an update on Evanda Kanda. I got a typical Coach Narduzzi response that he may return, may not. I'm out here looking for him. I was told he may not return in pads, guys, so I'll keep you posted. All right, Taylor, thanks. Davis in the pistol with Keaton Slovis. And here is Vincent Davis to the left side. And he will push it toward the 29 on first down. Ace Ely makes the stop for Georgia Tech, but there is Charlie Thomas, who missed the first half tonight. The very productive senior from Thomasville, Georgia, at linebacker. Big addition for this Georgia Tech team. He's their best defensive player, and now he's back in the game. Second down and three after Davis got seven on first. And here is Vincent lunging through, took a big lick, but will fall forward toward the 33, and that'll be enough for the first down. And there is Charlie Thomas, folks. <laughs> Comes in and immediately makes an impact. And it's worth noting, that targeting penalty in the last game against UCF, as you said earlier, Wes, it was his second of the year. So if he has a subsequent targeting in any game, not only will be he be ejected for that game, the rest of that game, but he'll also have to serve a one-game suspension. So really important for him to keep his head up and see what he hits. Look at Davis, a collision on the edge, and boy, Vincent Davis rolls out for about seven on first down. What a collision with Derek Allen. Or Miles, Miles Brooks, rather, here, Roddy, on the edge. How about the contact? Let's listen to it. Get you some 180 pounds of Vincent Davis coming downhill. 55 yards on nine carries for Vincent Davis. Sebo Flemister spells Davis here. On second down and three for Pitt. And here's Flemister, tried to elude the pressure and almost stepped out of Ely's tackle, but could not. Well done by Ace Ely. Came through that line untouched on a blitz. Line wasn't alert to it and forces a third and short. A little bit of confusion between Flemister and Slovis. Yeah. Hit one of seven. Here is Flemister straight ahead and going to be close. Needed to crack the 43, and I think they spotted him right on the 43. Ely again the stop. 
heck of a tackle by AC. I thought with the momentum of Flemister, he was going to get that easily, but he hit AC Ely and stopped right where he was. OJ for Ely got him a hair too late. Roddy, there are productive transfers, and then there's AC Ely, right? Yeah, he's done a great job since coming over from Maryland in the middle of that defense. One of the top tacklers in the ACC a year ago, 90 tackles, second on the team. Here's Davis, and Slovis going to keep it off the play fake. And Keaton Slovis to midfield here. Did he take another big lick here? Remember now, Slovis missed the Western Michigan game with a concussion. These quarterbacks, it's such a late slide from Slovis. Georgia Tech's got a player down. Yunjuin, Sylvain Yunjuin, and ooh, a little flyby for Keaton so, Slovis. So that that was that was Charlie Thomas. And if they dictate that Keaton Slovis was a defenseless player, that's contact to the head of a defenseless player. We'll go to break while they tend to Yonju. Well, Charlie Thomas back in this ballgame after missing the first half from a targeting call in the second half against UCF last week. And Keaton Slovis, a moment ago on a play. There's a swing pass for Flemister, or no, Mumfield, 24, 14 rather than 24, and a first down for Pitt in Georgia Tech territory at the 41. But, Roddy, let's rewind to play before. Yeah, it's it's a late slide by Keaton Slovis, and you need forcible contact in the head or neck area of a defenseless player there if they deem Slovis was defenseless because of the slide. I don't think the contact was forcible enough to make it targeting, but that was right on the line by Charlie Thomas. Pistol set on first and ten, and this is Vincent Davis. Made one guy miss in the backfield, but then a ton of white shirts show up at the line of scrimmage. No gain for Davis. Zeke Biggers led the charge. Pitts found some rhythm running the football on this drive. Zeke Biggers, he's shown up a couple of times in this game. But the, really the interior has done a nice job early in the second half creating some running lanes. Pitt on the opening drive of half two. Slovis. And that's Wayne who took a lick from Thomas. And down he goes at the 36 and a half. So it'll be five and change for a first down on third down coming up for Pitt. It's good protection and good coverage by Georgia Tech down the field. We haven't called the names of these corners very much because they haven't had much to do. Right. I mean, they have. Covered the heck out of these pit receivers and Keaton Slovis. Really, everything's been underneath. Tenth play of the drive. Kanate Mumfield to the slot on the left. Going to try and get it with Davis and Georgia Tech's not having it. Ball out. Charlie Thomas picks it up. Thomas eludes one, gets into pit territory, and will be brought down around the 16-17 yard line. And an impact play by Charlie Thomas stops Pitt's threat here in the second half. He's a guy that made the initial hit as well. What an impact by Charlie Thomas. He's just going to come around from the right side of your screen. Vincent Davis doesn't secure the ball. That ball's clearly out. Thomas picks it up. What a turn of events for Georgia Tech as Jalen King, the safety, comes in and knocks the ball out. And the Jackets, after allowing Pitt to drive down the field, now get the ball in great field position. Sure do. Ball at the 17 now for Sims and Brent Key. Just asking guys to, hey, get better each day as we go, right, Roddy? And now all of a sudden, after leading most of the first half, have a chance to regain the lead here on their first possession. Of the second half. You talked earlier that Brick Key said a lot of the, the, the team had been waiting around for something to happen. You got to go make something happen. Charlie Thomas and Jalen King did there. Sims, quick throw to the perimeter, and Leonard shoved out of bounds after the catch. Brandon Hill over there for the Panthers. There haven't been that many of those type throws accessible to Georgia Tech today. Pitt's really done a good job of taking away the shortstop, making Jeff Sims throw it further down the field. But the improvement that Jeff Sims has had, most of it has been with those short throws. Georgia Tech doing a nice job there. Second down and seven. Here's Sims trying to get to the edge. A flag thrown in. The tackle made by Shane Simon. 
And the Jackets commit the penalty. Holding, holding. Number two offense. Ten yard penalty. Still second down. Well, the red area has not been friendly to Georgia Tech. The penalty on the tight end, Leonard. They are 126 in FBS. Roddy, four touchdowns on 11 possessions. That 36% uh, in the red zone, that's worst in the country. Next closest is at just over 50%. Sims, middle of the field for Leonard, batted away. Another terrific effort by Brandon Hill. You see Dennison Hill set up now, third and long after the penalty, third and 17. Georgia Tech got great field possession, but shot itself in the foot with that holding. Now, what can you get back? Going to get EJ Jenkins, the big receiver in the slot, to the top of the screen. He's up here, likely going to get some sort of favorable coverage. And I think they just got movement from Corey Four Robinson. Start. Number 54, offense, five yard penalty, third down. That's Jordan Williams. There's Big Jordan, 5 4 in the white. Four penalties, 43 yards tonight on Keys Club. You're going to have to protect Jeff Sims first and foremost. Pitt's been able to get pressure in these situations. Do they choose to heat up the pocket or are they going to play coverage? Going to hand the ball to Hassan Hall. And he will dig toward the 23. And Baldonado led the tackle parade for Pitt. And Gavin Stewart, who has uh, counted himself for all of Georgia Tech's points, now to try another field goal. Name the starting kicker this week. And he's got a chance to put Georgia Tech back ahead. This would be his longest field goal of his college career. Kick away, and Stewart is good 40 yards on the number for Gavin Stewart Georgia Tech back in front 9-7 at Pittsburgh well we hope you can help folks who've been affected by Hurricane Ian donate now at redcross.org slash ESPN to help the Red Cross prepare for respond to and help people recover from this just incredible disaster that affected the certainly the southwest Florida area and has worked its way up the first coast area and into the Carolinas and my goodness what devastation we've seen this week from Mother Nature right and hope you can be a part of the recovery for those folks Charlie Thomas fumble recovery after Jalen King knocked it loose from Vincent Davis and turned into a field goal from Gavin Stewart and Georgia Tech back in front of number 24 Pittsburgh. There'll be no return by Flemister. And Keaton Slovis and Pitt back out to its 25 to get started here. Pitt had success running the football on that last drive. Fumble by Davis. Subsequent return really set Georgia Tech up nice. It's actually a pretty good response by Pitt's defense to hold him to a field goal, and, and not a short field goal at that. Right. This defensive line and this defense in general has got to find what they had throughout the, the, the majority of that first half. Clutch is the move to Gavin Stewart, Ben, for Brent Key, and also Jason Seymour, who Tuesday got himself a new list of responsibilities handling special teams. Here is Slovis, and that's Wayne on the catch at the 40 and a first down for Pittsburgh. 15-yard strike to Jared Wayne. Derek Allen to tackle, down to Taylor. Guys, you mentioned Jason Seymour, and definitely not the typical background. His childhood is not what you hear every day from these coaches. He actually grew up on a Native American reservation in Arizona, a chapter of the Navajo Nation. But he says it's where his passion and understanding of the game developed. As he said, it's pretty isolated, so uh, didn't have a lot of time for social life, so invested in athletics. Well, and done a terrific job tonight. 
Across the middle, Davis will slip down after five to the 45 ahead of Charlie Thomas. With the struggles on special teams for Georgia Tech throughout the year, I'd say Jason Seymour's done a heck of a job in yeah. a week to get him going. I'm not saying he's on the Broyles list, but it might be the Broyles coach of the week. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> Remember this crowd had had punts and kicks blocked in it's the Jeff goals. Collins era that were Putting him on some list you didn't really want to be on. Here's Vincent Davis. Boy, slid through one, slid through two, and finally tripped up in Georgia Tech territory. And Jalen King, who got a hand in on Davis, I believe, is the injured Georgia Tech player. And that's going to get us to a break. So, first and ten coming for Pitt when we continue 9-7 Georgia Tech. Oh, it's not a good look for Jalen King, Roddy. No, it's not. It's, and it's a big loss for Georgia Tech. He's an excellent player in that secondary for the Jackets and shows up a lot of places, made a lot of plays, forced a fumble earlier. Hope it he has a speedy recovery. Yep. Here's Vincent Davis. And he'll get a yard. Just a little cross play. Charlie Thomas. Recovered the fumble that Jalen King forced on the last drive to stop a Pittsburgh plus territory threat. And it's it's this is feeling more like the pace that Pittsburgh wants to play. Run the ball, control the clock. Georgia Tech actually led the time of possession at halftime. Pitt's gone ahead here. Slovis out in the flat. Mumfield. And boy, it takes one head on with Thomas and dropped at the 42. It's a really good open field tackle by Charlie Thomas. And it's really where he excels. You know, as a linebacker, the in the tackle stuff, it's tough for a guy his size to get off blocks, just a hair under 210 pounds. So sometimes he gets stuck on blocks a little bit. But when it comes to sideline to sideline, explosive plays, getting downhill, and especially in space, he is excellent. Right, he's got six tackles. This is his second series. <laughs> Pittsburgh, two of nine on third down. This is third and halfway. Slovis a quick throw and Thomas again breaks that up on the way to Jaden Bradley. Or beg your pardon, not Thomas, Derek Allen. Breaking from the secondary. It really feels like Georgia Tech has, doesn't feel like Pitt's going to go deep at all. Sitting on these underneath routes, knowing it's going to be a route right at the stick, breaking on it and breaking it up. And it's like Pitt's going to try and send out the punt team. They're going to have to. Have to hustle a little bit here. Well, they want to take the five and give Vanderhaar a little room. Yeah. Play clock down to five. Yeah, Nate McCollum standing inside the ten. There's the delay. That'll give Vanderhaar a little delay more of room. game. Kicking team. Five yard penalty. Still fourth now. Six minutes to go in the third and. Gavin Stewart's three field goals. I was curious to see whether or not Brent Key was going to decline the penalty. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, uh, a guy who's done a terrific job in his coaching history, but never a head coach, right? right? So gets the interim call from Dr. Angel Cabrera and Frank Neville, the chief of staff for Dr. Cabrera, the president of the institute, who's now the interim athletics director. Brent Key, a Georgia Tech alum. Name the interim coach, and here's the snap. And Vanderhaar trying to hang it. McCollum will signal for him, make the fair catch inside the 10 yard line. So Georgia Tech will take over there. Don't forget ACC PM, Mark Packer, Trey Boston, Taylor Tannenbaum, weekdays 4 to 7. Football and the latest news from around the league. Straight out of the basement, Chester, Fuller. They're there. Pac's had a full day. The full menu of the ACC, Pac's seen it all today. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Right there in the basement. Got to get Mark off the uh, off the injured list, Roddy. I still saw the boot this week. The boot is still there. The we'll boot's have to, there. We'll have to, we'll have to get a report at some point. Yeah. Dylan McDuffie in the backfield, first down. Sims going to keep it going to the right side and will be brought down, but it's a Georgia Tech first down to the 20-yard line. 
On the tackle by Brandon Hill. What a call by Chip Long, going with the zone read early on. You're going to see on the left side, Tyler Wilt squeezes down. There's no one there for the quarterback. And it gives Georgia Tech some breathing room. So the run of 12 and a first down. Sims on a boot back here and plenty of room if he wants. Now Jenkins dropped it at the 30-yard line, slightly behind him. But it's a ball I think E.J. Jenkins wants to help his quarterback with. Yeah, Jeff Sims has to either make a better throw or just run the football. There was acres of space ahead of him if he had decided to tuck it and run it. Delivers the ball behind E.J. Jenkins. But look, there, there's nobody out here. Should be an easy pitch and catch. And honestly, if Jeff Sims makes the throw, we're not even talking about it. But he had two really good options and couldn't execute. Second down and 10. A little delay. And this is McDuffie for a yard, maybe two. Devin Danielson, who flashed early, makes the play from the interior. He's been a man today in the middle. Yep. And a really nice job. Now you're getting a third down situation for Georgia Tech. Georgia Tech, 2 of 11 on third down. They missed their last nine. Sims to throw. Now will bail right, head up the sideline, and dive over the 30. Did he get it? He did. First down, Georgia Tech on the run by Jeff Sims. I actually thought he bailed from the pocket a little quick, but it allowed him to get into space. Bengali Kamara. I don't know if he let up or just couldn't, really couldn't get Sims. But a, this has been a really nice job of Jeff Sims managing on a few third and longs using his legs. Georgia Tech snaps a streak of missing their last nine to pick up their third third down conversion of the night. Hassan Hall goes nowhere. In fact, may give oh, a yard back. Oh, Servassier oh, Dennis the tackle. Sims is up to 71 yards on 15 carries, Roddy. And I mean, it's really the first thing that Pat Narduzzi and Randy Bates, defensive coordinator for Pitt, told us. Jeff Sims is a danger once he gets out of the pocket. Yeah. The throw numbers haven't quite been there, but he has been incredibly effective in the run, and that includes the sack yardage. Georgia Tech over 100 yards of rushing tonight. And Hall trying to wait patiently, but Dennis equal to the task. Pitt gets the stop. Third down coming up is a little off the ball between Marquez Williams and E.J. Jenkins. So we showed that a second ago. Jeff Sims has 71 yards rushing. Which should add 27 back to that because 27 of those were take 27 yards are taken away because of the sacks. Pitt with four sacks on the day. They'll be looking for another one here. Third and seven for the Jackets. Sims from the pocket and the catch made Malachi Carter the grab and he will be stopped shy of the first down by about three yards. First grab of the night for Malachi Carter his 85th career catch and Marquez Williams the stop for Pitt. How in the world did Malachi Carter stay on his feet? It was like Spider-Man coming down. Landing almost got the first down too. Carter tonight playing in his 52nd game, making his 37th start, and now 29 straight games with a catch. Shanahan, the left-footed Irishman, flips it down the field and gets a terrific bounce. Out of bounds near the 16-yard line. 45-yard punt. Hey, how about tonight's Wesopedia? Malachi Carter makes his 52nd game appearance at Georgia Tech, 37th career start. Who holds the record for career games started at Georgia Tech? Roderick Jones, Taylor Davis. 2008 to 2011, 52 of them for Roddy Jones. Well, you, you, gotta, you gotta be in a sweet spot where you're decent enough to get on the field but not good enough to leave early. <laughs> you, stick around, you stick around for a long time. <laughs> Oh my goodness, really? So it's, a, it's, a, it's a delicate balance there, Wes. You get, you get too good and they'll want you to go to the draft or something. I thought you forego the draft. Here's uh, a throw, Bartholomew, score. the catch from Slovis, and a first down coming for Pitt. Zeke Biggers downfield the big fella at a West Row end in Salisbury, North Carolina, the tackle. 
pretty good move for Big Beggars, who now is uh, seated at the 25. Boy, Bartholomew's played an important role here tonight, Roddy. He really has. If you take away really the last drive for Kanate Mumfield, he's kind of been the only guy, Gavin Bartholomew. Yep. He's so, been receiving yards on the day. He's banged up last week, too, so good to see him back healthy. Downstairs to Taylor. Yeah, guys, I was going to mention the fact that he actually had to leave the game early last week. He was in a sling the second half of the game, and coach told us that he's been dealing with a shoulder injury. So they knew he was going to be able to go tonight, but they didn't know how long. But I've seen his presence over here on the sideline as well, and his relationship with Keaton Slovis is certainly one that's developed. And coach told us he's one of the guys they have the most trust in. So even with that shoulder that's clearly been nagging him, he's a key piece of this thing. Yep. True sophomore. He's one of the best, one of the best tight ends in the league already. Yeah, in a league that's got some good tight ends. Oh, yeah, a couple of them are playing right now down in Death Valley. Mm -hmm. Davis Allen and Jake Brenning still have been fantastic, but Gavin Bartholomew, if you had a draft, he'd be up there. Here's the pistol and a first down for Pitt at its 28, trailing by two. And Vincent Davis back on the ground. And boy, Keon White slung him around. It's almost like a two-point takedown in wrestling. And it'll be enough for a first down for Vincent Davis. Ten-yard run off the number. The right side of that offensive line, though, just collapses it down. Here's the tackle on Davis. Kind of a double team there at the end. Keon White, originally at Old Dominion, transferred to Georgia Tech. Pitt over 100 yards rushing. Came in sixth in the ACC at 181.5 tonight. Slovis in trouble. Got to cut it loose. Mumfield the catch. Flag on the play. It'll be a hold, I believe, on Pittsburgh. It's a first down if it stands, however, to a 45 of Georgia Tech. But don't believe this one's going to make it. No, it certainly will not. K.J. Wallace was wrangled. Holding. Offense, number 22. 10-yard penalty. Repeat first down. I think I remember our conversation a couple weeks ago prior to Rhode Island about Abanacanda's ability to block. Vincent Davis struggled here with Wallace. Yeah, he just kind of got out of position. And once he did, you grab K.J. Wallace around the around the neck, basically, and try and protect your quarterback. And, and Pitts had some of this today. When yeah. you get momentum and then a penalty brings them back, this has not been an explosive offense at all today, especially without Israel Abanacanda. There's been really no downfield passing game. It's a tough situation. Final minute of the third. First and long after the penalty. Slovis, and here's Mumfield at the 35, 40, and out to the 43. That cuts down the margin a little bit on the sim stop. 15-yard throw. It certainly does, and Mumfield created a lot of separation with that route against Miles Sims. Really hadn't called those guys' names very much because they'd done an excellent job on the outside. But that time, Mumfield able to find his way open. Got Wayne here to the boundary. Tight end and two receivers to the left. There's another long throw, and trying to come back is Kanate Mumfield. And he was battling Samari Walton. So third and six will be the next snap. Look at where Mumfield is. He's about two yards from the sideline. On any of those deep routes, you have to give the quarterback more cushion towards the sideline so there's room to throw that ball. A little bit of contact down the field. I thought it was a good no call letting him play, but Zamari Walton doing an excellent job of riding Mumfield towards the sideline so there's nowhere to throw it. What do you like here on third and a half dozen? I think you're looking for Gavin Bartholomew or Jared Wayne. Bartholomew not in the game here. Snap to Slovis. Georgia Tech rushes four. Slovis pumps, throws, and intercepted. Charlie Thomas at midfield. Intended for Carter Johnson, the tight end, and Charlie Thomas, who recovered a fumble earlier, now comes up with the interception. My goodness. What an impact Charlie Thomas has made. I don't know why Keaton Slovis throws this ball. Charlie Thomas is sitting right next to Carter Johnson. Johnson doesn't come back to the football. Charlie Thomas does and just takes it away from him. 
That was one of those where it just seemed like Charlie Thomas wanted the ball. And Carter Johnson's only got one catch on the year. Not usually in that situation. Didn't handle it the right way. Didn't help his quarterback by coming back to the football. Ball at the 49 of Pittsburgh. Georgia Tech, third in the ACC, 20th nationally in turnover margin. Plus four coming in. He's plus two tonight. Sims. To the wide corner and will throw it out of bounds. Jeff Sims gets you out there where he knows he has to make a decision, but so does the defense, Ronnie. Yeah, and they were trying to hit Nate McCollum coming on a deep over route back the other way, but the pressure flushed Sims away from that route. So there's really no one, no one over there to go with the football. Pitt did a pretty good job of not letting Sims get the edge and run the football. Second down and 10 in Panther territory. Sims from the pocket, long throw, Leonard the catch. Kamara had him, Leonard kept his feet, and they're going to measure him out of bounds back at the 42. It'll be a seven-yard play. I think Dylan Leonard thought he stayed in bounds. We'll get another look. Long throw, as you said. Yeah, oh, he yeah. steps out very clearly after the hit from Marquez Williams. And if you had Georgia Tech up 9-7 to seven going into the fourth quarter, congratulations to you. Yeah. Final 15 at Acrisure. Panthers trail by two next. Well, we go to the fourth quarter here in Pittsburgh. Number 24, Pitt, trails Georgia Tech 9-7. to seven. That's Izzy Abanacanda on the bench, right arm in a sling. Play of the moment is third down for Georgia Tech, and a catch flag thrown from the secondary on the grab by Nate McCollum that, if it stands, will be a Georgia Tech first down. Tyler Wilts the stop, and the Jackets already up on the line, ready to go here with first down if the play stands. Gary Patterson sorts it out for us. Holding, holding, defense number 14. 14. 10 yard penalty from the previous spot. Automatic first down. Marquez Williams, the guilty party. Ultimately, Georgia Tech is going to have the first down no matter what. The question for, for Tech can you find a way to get in the end zone? Right. I would. At some point, take a shot. Take a shot to EJ Jenkins against one of these smaller receivers. You're going to have opportunities. It's how Pittsburgh plays. They're going to leave those corners on an island. So as you get a little closer, take a shot to the end zone and see if you can sneak a sneak a touchdown. Roddy, they haven't scored in the fourth quarter this year. <laughs> Thirty-one to nothing. Sims on the perimeter. McCollum throws beyond the reach of Leonard. They had two of these called a week ago for Nate McCollum. One ended up being incomplete. He completed another one, but trick play. That was going to be a tough. That was going to be a tough one, no matter what. Nate McCollum, a guy that came to Georgia Tech as a baseball player as well as a football player, just a little bit off under pressure there. Second in the full ten. Pretty good arm, though. The ball's on the line. Yeah, it was. Jenkins in the boundary. Three receivers to the field. And here is Sims and a great play inside to Elijah Cansey. Cansey can win, Roddy, on just about anybody one-on-one, -on -one, I think. Usually it's the quickness that gets, but here it's the power. Here he is on the left side of your screen. He's just going to discard. The guard, Pierce Quick. Oh, it actually was a center, Weston Franklin. E.J. Jenkins down on the field now. We'll step aside here in Pittsburgh. Panthers trailing by two, third and 11 next. With Roddy Jones, West Durham, Taylor Davis, Adam Coppinger, our producer, Nick Young, our director, great ACC Network crew tonight, prime time at Pittsburgh. Georgia Tech leading number 24 Pitt, 9-7, third and 11 for Jeff Sims. They're going to run the ball with Hassan Hall, 
And the stack continues to shove, and it'll be a first down for Georgia Tech. The one-two of the guys in white, pretty impressive, Roddy. It's evident the confidence has been growing the longer they've led in this game, the longer they've played with Pitt. Savasia Dennis does a really nice job of getting there initially, and then there's a hit by BJ by Brandon Hill. It was at the 30-yard line. The cavalry comes, and they push for the first down. First and 10 at the 20. Here's Sims looping for the end zone, and it is not complete to Malachi Carter. A lot of hand fighting with A.J. Woods that way, Roddy. But I love the mentality by, by Chip Long. There is some hand fighting, a tug of the jersey. Not called. But I love the, I love the call, though. Take a shot to the end zone. You've got big receivers. E.J. Jenkins not in right now. But Malachi Carter still 6'2 with great leaping ability. If you're Jeff Sims, you want to put that a little higher so it ends up being a jump ball. But I like the call, taking a shot down the field. Georgia Tech's fourth red zone trip. They've got three field goals tonight. Second down for Sims. That's Carter in motion. And now timeout. Brent Key. Timeout, Georgia Tech. That's the first charge timeout of the half. Full timeout. So we take it with them here in Pittsburgh. Second in the full 10 in Pitt territory for the Jackets. Today, a team of Bristol Myers Squibb employees kicked off the final leg rally of a 27-day cross-country ride from Pittsburgh as part of the 2022 Coast to Coast for Cancer ride, which has already raised more than $975,000 for the V Foundation for Cancer Research. They're aspiring to raise $1 million to support the V Foundation. You can help support Coast to Coast for Cancer ride by visiting www.cancerbikeride.org tonight. Second in the full 10 at pitch 20 for Georgia Tech. Leading by two, Sims the throw to the perimeter. And McCollum the catch taken out of bounds at the 13 by Tyler Wiltz. A little high tackle here. A slant return route by Nate McCollum. Awkward tackle. And Wes, we, we haven't seen a lot of Bengali Kamara yeah. on this drive at all. It's been mostly Tyler Wilts who made that tackle, but if you're Georgia Tech, I have to imagine that the ball's going in Jeff Sims' hands. He's Dave, been most effective. David Green is coming on late. Very slowly, too. Yeah, and Devin Danielson's going to come out. It's frustrating for Georgia Tech. They sub, so Pitt can sub. Brent Key's going to have to call a timeout. Yeah, he sure is. And Key calls another one. Timeout, Georgia Tech. That's their second charge timeout. Stop the clock, please. Second timeout for Georgia Tech. Leaves Stop Key with only one to go in his interim debut. Well, it, it, that was a heady defensive play by Pittsburgh. Georgia Tech subs, so they're going to hold until Pitt has a chance to sub. Pitt took their time subbing. <laughs> And it forced, it forced Georgia Tech to have to burn a timeout. It's frustrating for Brent Key. It's frustrating for Brent Key and this Georgia Tech team having to burn two timeouts on this drive, but. A lot going on in that bench area tonight for Brent Key. Yep. All the other business stuff that took place earlier this week. I was really on our Thursday visit. I was impressed with how much processing had gone on to get them to focus on practicing and playing and not let the other stuff become the factor tonight. I, I said it in the open. Brent Key learned how to become a coach under George O'Leary and Nick Saban. Right. There is a, a, a matter of substance and of, of no nonsense that comes with that. You're going to get back to the basics reinsert the foundation of this program, starting with discipline, starting with consistency. Brent Key has certainly done that, and I think that business-like attitude, that workman approach to the week, yeah. I think has really rubbed off on this team and given them stability in a really tumultuous time. So now, third and three, in pit territory at the Panthers 13. That's Carter in motion. Here's Sims on the sprint out. Being chased. Oh, Hallett almost picked another one. Incomplete. They were trying to hit Carter. Cancy was flushing Sims. 
going to be a tough completion no matter what because the space was running out. But it was a full sprint for Jeff Sims. And Eric, if you had a stat for almost interceptions, Eric Howlett would lead the nation this week. Yep. Had his hands on three balls. And now Gavin Stewart comes out. He's hit extend this lead. from 40, 33, 37, and this is 30 and change. Kick is away from Stewart, and it is good. The Gavin guy who's Stewart. been named the kicker, Roddy, for the ball game, hadn't kicked a field goal in a ball game in well over a year, hadn't made a collegiate field goal since 2020. He's coming here tonight with ice in his veins, and Tag four of them. Every every Georgia Tech fan is sitting at home, and I know a lot of them sitting at home thinking, what took so long for Gavin Stewart? Four field goals on the day and four chances. He's been absolutely excellent. And it's been Georgia Tech's offense that's, that's gotten him down there in large part, although the defense got him down there once. But when they've stalled, it's been Gavin Stewart that's gone and finished, something that's really been missing. They were 0 for 5 in the red zone a week ago, Wes, and the inability to make field goals played into it. Played into it. If we had a player of the game, early, early on, the voting would be heavily towards Gavin Stewart. First points of the fourth quarter this year for Georgia Tech come on the foot of Gavin Stewart, and it pushes the Jackets advantage to five at 12 to seven. And the young man from Savannah, Georgia will Drive it over the top of Flemister and Pittsburgh now has had two turnovers in three possessions. The other one has been a punt. And the Georgia Tech defense has got to come out. And Charlie Thomas has been the second half star. He didn't even play in the first half. All he does gets it wrapped up, picks up a fumble, gets Georgia Tech in scoring position. That led to a field goal. But he wasn't done then. On a third down, intercepts a pass from Keaton Slovis. And Charlie Thomas he had to sit out the first half of the Western Carolina game, too. Made an impact in that one. He has been excellent. Already six tackles. Vincent Davis for the injured Israel. Abana can down the ball. Fumbled, but did he hit the ground first? Georgia Tech says they have it. They do at the 34-yard line. Davis's second fumble Rolling of the, the night. Field, the fumble recovered by Georgia Tech. And the third turnover for Pittsburgh in this second half. Clayton Powell Lee, a true freshman from Westlake in Atlanta, comes up with the loose change. Let's see. He was close to the ground. No, that ball is out. clearly out. Georgia Tech forcing another fumble. Looked like that was Ace Ely that forced that one. And yeah, number two comes in there, pokes the ball out. It's on the ground. One play on the field for Pitt, and you give the ball back to Georgia Tech. This Pitt offense has been on the sideline the vast majority of the second quarter. Georgia Tech's second third half. possession, Roddy, of this second half in plus territory. Flags thrown on the first play. Straight ahead, Hassan Hall. Offside. Defense, number 90. Five-yard penalty. Repeat first down. DeAndre Jules. The big red shirt junior. West pitch drives in the second half. Ten plays, 38 yards, fumble. Six plays, punt. Five plays, interception. One play, fumble. It has been a disastrous yep. second half for this pit offense. Yep. Three turnovers for a team that came into the ball game, plus three takeaway giveaway. They're back to even. And here is Hall going nowhere. So it'll be second down. Servassier Dennis the stop with Canty. It's a loss of one, so it's back to second and six, almost seven. And time is ticking on Pitt. The defending champs into conference play for the first time tonight. Sims looks left, throws left, the catch, and first down for McCollum. And Nate McCollum inside the 20 to the 19 before the Shields runs him out. Nate McCollum has found a lot of success out of the slot. It's a quick little out. He's able to get the first down against the linebacker Solomon DeShields. 
Georgia Tech, you've got to be thinking, we have to punch this ball in the end zone and really put some pressure on Pitt on offense. Here's the give, and nothing there because Hall got swallowed up by Haba Baldonado. They called Baldonado's name a lot nope. today. Missed a week ago. It's really been Kalaja Kansi that's done most of the damage for this Pitt defensive line. And Devin Danielson, but Baldonado comes off the right side. Goes right past the block of Ipolo. And we make the play. Second and a dozen. That's Leonard in motion to the boundary, the tight end. Sims on a straight drop. Up in the pocket, flipping for the end zone. And E.J. Jenkins, touchdown Georgia Tech. There has been pressure on Jeff Sims all night long. The composure in the pocket on this one. You get a couple of guys around you. David Green's coming, and you still drop a dime to the end zone and find E.J. Jenkins, who finishes it. And Georgia Tech has this place shocked. Here is Stewart for the extra point to make it a 12-point margin with 10 and a half to go. E.J. Jenkins, who had a terrific touchdown catch in the ball game against Clemson to open the campaign. I mean, a great catch. Does it here again tonight with A.J. Woods defending. Jeff Sims and Georgia Tech lead by 12 in the fourth. Georgia Tech, a three-touchdown underdog tonight here in Pittsburgh leads by a dozen with ten and a half to go Stewart's kick and Flemister's going to let that hit and Pittsburgh's going to scrimmage from its 25 and for the Panthers riding the second half has been a nightmare three turnovers in four possessions the nightmare might be kind it's been a disaster dumpster fire whatever you want to call it it's been that Fumble, punt, interception, fumble. And now you find yourself down two scores. So the Panthers have to get something going offensively. Going to have to stay on the field and cut the turnovers. Sebo Flemister with Keaton Slovis in the backfield to get Pitt started. And Frank Zignetti Jr., they won't be able to wait around now. Slovis will get the ball out here as Mumfield, and he will break the 35 for a Panther first down ahead of Kenan Johnson's tackle. One of the things that's been on full display, really with the exception when Vincent Davis has run the ball, is this Georgia Tech team's ability to tackle. Statistically, they are the best tackling team in the ACC. Another quick snap here, Slovis. Looking for Jared Wayne, who makes the catch. First down again. Out to the 48-49 yard line. Samari Walton to stop and a couple of nice throws for Slovis. But Pitt's down a dozen as we go inside 10 minutes. I like them getting Keaton Slovis in some sort of rhythm early on in this drive. Give your offense something to feel good about early. Here's Slovis trying to flip it out toward Flemister. But the pressure was too quick, too fast from Ace Ely. And it was sniffed out by this Georgia Tech defensive line. You had Micaiah Scott, who felt the release of the offensive lineman, sniffed out the screen, took it away from Flemister. Oh, they're going to call grounding. Wow. It's a spot foul, loss of down. Wow, down Gary Patterson has called grounding this on Pitt. Is this a good spot, Bill? No, that was no receiver over there. No, no. And we're getting a I mean, little bit of the conversation on the back end here. You can hear it. 39-yard line, 39-yard line. This is, this is about, it goes right over the head. Well, yeah, second, second I, down. I kind of second, agree with Gary Patterson second down, now. Right? Okay. Second down. With the way right. that he threw it. And Gary Patterson struggling with the microphone. Right? Wayne was further down the field. The ball. Obviously thrown in the pit bench, and here's Slovis now after the loss of down, batted in the air, 
and it's pulled down by Marcus Miner, the left guard, on the deflection. So it'll stay with Pitt. Charlie Thomas, of course, <laughs> deflected it. It's been an unbelievable half for Charlie Thomas defensively. How about Charlie Thomas just tossing Jake Cradle? Just tossing him to the side, getting in the backfield, knocking that ball up in the air, and Marcus Miner goes up for like, like it's a rebound. And Pitt had some momentum early, but how many times have we seen Pitt with these penalties yeah. shoot themselves in the foot offensively? Third and an acre here for Narduzzi's team. 29 for the first down and Slovis down the seam and it hit the defender right in the back and that was Kenny Bennett on a ball for Carter Johnson the tight end. Wow. Wow is right. It's been somewhat unbelievable how Pitt's fallen apart offensively in the second half. Hits the defender right in the back of the head. And back to that grounding penalty, Wes. I get what, what Keaton Slovis was trying to do, trying to throw it over the head of Flemister, but it was so far off to the side that I can see very well how that was called. So under nine to go, Vanderhaar to punt it. Flips it over at about the 35, and it bounces out of bounds. So with... 8.45 to play. That's where Georgia Tech will take over. Just a 33-yard punt. Jeff Sims back to work. And Roddy, you can't get around the fact that Brent Key got this job Monday. And here on Saturday night, they're trying to pull a win over an AP Top 25 team for the first time in, well, about five years, maybe a little bit longer than that, since they beat Virginia Tech on the road with a backup quarterback named Matthew Jordan. Yeah rush for 123 yards in that game and what a statement it would be for Brent Key. I mean you look at the rest of this schedule and the Coastal is has a lot of very winnable games. This was supposed to be one of the ones that was tougher for Georgia Tech and here they are leading. And here is Hassan Hall on his best run of the night before Brandon Hill brings him down at the 37 yard line in pit territory and all the momentum now riding with one and three, Georgia Tech. It's a big hole there on the left side. And Hassan Hall's got great speed down the field. And, and Brinke talked about wanting something good to happen for these players and thinking that, hey, if you could just get something good to happen and have them see success, you could get them on their way. 75 yards on 13 carries for Hall. Here's Sims. And he's going to slide down inbounds after just a yard or so. Keeps the clock running. Pitt's defense has done a really good job of keeping Georgia Tech out of the end zone, but and the clock is not their friend at this point. You can't have Georgia Tech go have a long drive here. And if they're able to score a touchdown, then the game is gonna it's gonna be a real uphill battle. But you can hold Georgia Tech to no points or a field goal. You got a shot. Here goes Hall, left side. Hassan Hall into the pit secondary, and another first down for Georgia Tech, and another scoring opportunity in the red zone at the 18. And Brandon Hill shaking up. Well, watch the offensive line here. It's going to be zone. They're all going to come this way, and it's a great block. There's a great block by number 60, Paula Vipolo. Just absolutely dumps one of the pit defensive linemen on the ground. A major pancake. So while they tend to Brandon Hill, the former offensive line coach, who I guess still technically has offensive line in his responsibilities, Brent <laughs> Key, has got to feel pretty good about the way they have run the football. And he and Chip Long and, boy, Heisman Trophy winner Chris Winky on that staff now. Roddy, they've kind of found some magic dust in the red zone tonight. Look at Key now. By the way, that is Joe Burns running behind the big gold wall of number 70 from Trustville, Alabama. Huh? Of course it is. Those are some Georgia Leary days. Yeah, they are. 
was then a GA under George O'Leary. Yep. Went to Alabama, worked under Nick Saban. Been talked about as one of the best offensive line coaches in the country, and it's been a tough assignment here at Georgia Tech rebuilding this group. But the way they performed late in this game, I think they're going to turn on the film and see a crew that it gained a lot of confidence over the course of this one. Hall stays in the backfield. Sims going to throw here, and a stretch out catch by Dylan Leonard, the tight end, near the 12 yard line. Stop me if you've heard this one before, but a ton of pressure coming at Jeff Sims. He just stands in the pocket and delivers. And I know statistically last week was his best game. His stats aren't going to match that. He's only thrown for 92 yards. But with what he's done with his legs and then the throws down the stretch, it's been a really good performance by Jeff Sims. Ja'Kaia Leftwich has come in to play right tackle, Roddy. Corey Robinson came off after the last snap for Georgia Tech. And here is Hall bouncing into the arms of Servassier Dennis at the 10. So third down and short coming up. We're going to be under six minutes left after this snap. This is a massive play for Pig. You right. have to hold Georgia Tech to a field goal here. Field goal attempt. Because that keeps it as a two-score game. If you allow a touchdown, there's just not enough time unless you're able to hit something crazy. Super quick, big player throwing a Hail Mary at the end. Yep. Pat Narduzzi, does he want a timeout? Looks like they were trying to get something called. Here's a throw to Sims, and McCollum the catch inside the 10. First and goal, Georgia Tech at the 5. Devonshire shoves Nate McCollum out of bounds. But a fresh set of downs for Georgia Tech. First and goal at pitch five. They have helped this offensive line out a lot by getting the ball out of Jeff Sims' hands quick so that there's no chance. There's no chance of Georgia Tech, or there's no chance of Pitt's defensive line getting to Jeff Sims. I mean, you had multiple guys on Georgia Tech's offensive line get beat, but Sims balls out, not able to touch him. So first and goal it is. Hall is the running back. He'll get the call and chop down in the backfield, and that is Kansi. So Kalijah Kansi, the tackle behind the line, but the clock continues to move. And the upset bid for Georgia Tech tonight. Pitt had come in here, winners of eight of their last 10, 12 of their last 15. Georgia Tech had lost nine straight against FBS teams and 10 of 11. Got six foot seven receiver, six foot three receiver, both down to the bottom. That's Leonard in motion. Here is the toss. This is Hall trying to get to the corner. Hassan Hall hit the pylon, and that's a Georgia Tech touchdown. An exclamation point on a night to remember so far for Britt Key, Hassan Hall. Leg, he might have been down before he hit the pylon. Look at that right leg. Goes down right there. I think it's before he hits the pylon, West. So I would imagine. We're gonna have a look. We're gonna have a look at this one. While they're reviewing this, this is a Georgia Tech team that in its last five games against FBS opponents has scored a total of 10 points. Right. Excuse me, 20 points. The leg's down right there before it hits. The question is, where's the ball? But 10 points against Clemson, 10 points against UCF, shutout against Ole Miss to end last season. Obviously, the two shutouts that ended last year Notre Dame, Notre Dame and Georgia Tech. Notre Dame and Georgia. Georgia, rather. Right. And they come out today, and they've been helped by Pitt. Pitt has imploded in a lot of ways, but they've also helped themselves. They've made plays, which is exactly what Brent Key talked about, not waiting for something to happen, going and making something happen. Yeah. Looks like that ball is going to be just short of the goal line, I would imagine. Hey, Roddy, while we wait on the, on the final review here, two sides of this tonight, right? There's yep. Georgia Tech and all the things that have happened in, what, four and a half days. And then there's the Pittsburgh side of this. Yeah. You go three and one, 
You got a great win against West Virginia. Hard fought overtime loss to Tennessee. You survived West Virginia. After Michigan. further review, it was determined that the ball carrier was down just inside the one yard line. Third and goal, just inside the one. The clock will start on my signal. So a big play coming here, by the way. Um, but if you're Pat Narduzzi now, you're starting conference play tonight. There's seven more of these after this. Yeah. And, and it I, might not be the healthiest crowd going into next week with Virginia Tech's here at 3:30. And look, this the, the Coastal Division. I mean, it looks like anybody could win it at this point. Yep. With the way Pitt has looked, the defending champs, they were the best team coming in. Sims going to try and sneak it, and boy, the Pitt stopped that at the point of attack, huh? And EJ Jenkins getting into it. Way up, well away from the play with MJ Devonshire. You have to be careful. There's a little shove there, but it was a good surge by Pitt. Servassier Dennis at the front of the class. Georgia Tech, two of eight on fourth down this year. They're going to try and finish the job with under four to go here. Sims wants to throw toward Jenkins and incomplete. So on downs, Georgia Tech is turned away. What a stand by Pitt. I, I like the decision to go for it on fourth down by Brent Key. I don't like the goal line fade. Jeff Sims has to keep it in bounds, not able to do it. Pitt going to get the ball back down two scores. Twelve point lead for Brent Key and Georgia Tech. You see the three turnovers for Pittsburgh. They came in the first four second half possessions, Roddy. How about the aggressiveness by Brent Key going for it on fourth down? Didn't love the call, but I don't mind the decision. Slovis has it batted down by Charlie Thomas. Charlie Thomas has had about three games statistically in the second half. He's been unbelievable. And he's just been fantastic. There he is. He's going to come right up the middle. Sebo Flemister tries to pick him up. I'm in a one-man wrecking crew. Yep. He may take player of the game from Gavin Stewart. Yeah. <laughs> Slovis and Pittsburgh need something in a hurry. And Branson Taylor moved early. The left tackle. He's starting in place of Carter Warren tonight. False start. False start. Number 78. 78. Offense. Offense. Half the distance half to the goal. To the goal. Still, second down. Still second down. What's half the distance of one? Exactly. Half yard line. It, 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 it honestly, like it doesn't even matter. They should they should go on three this time. And the old, I mean, the, the the thought process is you're giving up a half yard if you jump. You get five yards. Hard count every single time you're backed up. Here is Slovis now, second and ten, and another move. Ball start, number 76, offense. Half the distance to the goal. Still second down. Didn't work the first two times. You're going four this time. I mean, you're, you're not giving up any yardage at this point. <laughs> We're moving it back fractions of an inch. Well, you keep adding to the tally. Pitt had 97 yards in penalties last week. 85 and a fraction right now. <laughs> do, does e, do each one of these count as a yard? <laughs> My math is clearly not that good. Here's Slovis, middle of the field. That's Bartholomew. Hurdles another guy. First down, Pittsburgh, and it's 15. That is Chewin, by the way, finally made the tackle. It's one heck of a throw by Keenan Slovis. John Jewin's right to the next, to the, to the, Right next to Gavin Bartholomew. Slovis. Jump ball. Mumfield a heck of a grab. 34-yard line. And Kanate Mumfield might be shaken up. K.J. Wallace was there for Georgia Tech. And, well, we've seen a lot of fellas on the turf tonight post-whistle. We have. Both schools. Some key players lost on both sides. Jalen King for Georgia Tech out of the game with injury. Israel Abanakanda for Pitt. And that's the, the Abanakanda injury. You see him there in the middle of the screen. Rodney Hammond also out. Yeah. Vincent Davis carried the load. He's fumbled twice today, so it's going to be Sebo Flemister the rest of the day. 
But Mumfield takes a really hard hit on the ground as he comes down, not able to brace himself. Yeah, nothing malicious from Wallace. He no. just was there defending. Mumfield just a hard fall. It is of note, by the way, this natural grass surface here at Acrisure Stadium. The Steelers play a home game against the Jets in about 14 hours. <laughs> Quick turnaround. And uh, they have done a terrific job this week. They also resodded the middle of the field. Here's Slovis. He's going to take the deep shot now. And it's a long ball intended downfield. And that was Bub Means, who we have not called at all, Roddy, much at tonight. And he was terrific last week. It's great coverage downfield by Keenan Johnson. Cornerback was all over Bub Means. So Vincent Davis into the backfield now with Slovis. Pittsburgh needs a score, a stop, and another possession to have a chance. Slovis up in the pocket, downfield. Jared Wayne holds on to the first down ball at the 45 of Georgia Tech. Zamari Walton, the tackle for the Jackets, and the clock continues to move here after they stop it for the first down mark. Good, strong hands by Jared Wayne. Mario Walton was all over. Here is Slovis flush to his right, and he'll throw it into the Georgia Tech bench area. Keon White was in pursuit. Roddy, this ball game started tonight with Georgia Tech driving the field. 12 plays, kicked a field goal. Gavin Stewart, first field goal in two years. Mumfield's come back in the ball game. And then Pat Narduzzi's team, how many interceptions would be interceptions tonight? And Eric Hallett should have three. One of them a pick six on the first drive. Those things are going to be, those are the type of plays Pitt's going to look back on and just kick themselves. Yep. Their own turnovers, their own penalties, and the missed opportunities. Here's Slovis up in the pocket, throws, caught, means to the 30. The clock will stop with 2.39 to go Miles Sims. The tackle, 16-yard throw. Great functional mobility from Keaton Slovis, maneuvering in the pocket, moving up, avoiding defenders, and then delivering as he's being taken down. Throw right on the money. Clock continues to move, 2.23 to play. Here's Slovis, throws it to Davis, and he will step out of bounds. That'll stop the clock, 2.17 to go. Near the 26 yard line. So here, Pittsburgh. Clock's running. Once you get under two minutes, going out of bounds stops the clock. It does not do that until you're under two minutes. Slowed over 200 yards tonight. Got to cut it loose. Going to fire for the end zone. Caught. Touchdown, Pittsburgh and Jaden Bradley. Pittsburgh drives the length of the field after stopping Georgia Tech on fourth down. And here the Jackets just didn't want to give up a big play down the field. Jaden Bradley gets behind the defense. It's on the top part of your screen. It's just miscommunication. No one covers Bradley. A busted coverage. And Pitt's got life. 157 to go in Sauls to try and cut it to a five-point game. And the kick is good. So now 19-14. All three timeouts for Pat Narduzzi. Can he kick it away here? Don't mess around with the onside kick. Uh, I would onside kick it. I would. It gives you another chance to get the ball back. So. Well, remember how Pitt just drove 99 yards. They did because Georgia Tech thought they were in the end zone on the Hassan Hall touchdown run. He was ruled just short. Third down, they were stopped, and then on fourth down, Roddy, jump ball to E.J. Jenkins in the end zone. It's a really nice job on the other side by A.J. Woods with the coverage. Jeff Sims, though, would have loved to have given his receiver a chance, given his receiver a chance. It doesn't have to be a perfect throw. just needs to be high in the air and let your guy go up and get it. 
The decision, though, by Brent Key to go for it on fourth down on the one-yard line, you know, he's got to be thinking on that sideline. We can't let this one get away. You had the opportunity to kick the field goal, which it's still a two-score game at that point, but Pitt would need a touchdown and a two-point conversion to tie the game up. Here, if Pitt gets a touchdown, we're going to win the football game. Meanwhile, it is Micaiah Scott who is uh, down on the field and now being helped up. We'll be interesting to see what Pat Narduzzi does here because the analytics would tell you to go ahead and kick the onside kick because you obviously have a chance to recover it on the onside kick and then a chance to stop them. But if you want to play more of the field possession game, you kick it deep. You rely on your defense. You've got three timeouts. You rely on your defense to stop the run, which they had a tough time doing yep. during that last drive. And then you you let your offense go at it with no timeouts left. Well, Brent Key's team leading by five, 157 to go. This is the final game on a busy day of ACC football. Clemson a winner tonight over NC State. Duke beat Virginia by three touchdowns. Watch out for the Duke Blue Devils. That's a good football team. And the Coastal is, let's just say it's up and down from week to week. Here is Sauls, and he's going to squib it, just kind of hang it up at the 35. And McCollum backed into it, kind of his own guy and slipped down. So Georgia Tech, 155 to go, Roddy. And the ball right around the 27-yard line. And Pat Narduzzi's got all three timeouts. Don't forget, ACC Huddle follows our coverage. Jordan Cornett, Eddie Royal, EJ Manuel, Coach Richt, all standing by. What a day it has been in this league. Wake Forest, a winner at Florida State. Boston College, a one-point winner at home, Roddy, over Louisville. Carolina got 363 yards from Drake May, beat Virginia Tech. And the two games tonight. First down, this is Hall, and he will step out at one, bang off another, and Hassan Hall now into the pit secondary. And Jeff Sims trying to help him out. Did Hall get to the house? No, ruled out of bounds at the 10. Watch how far down the field Jeff Sims gets. First off, the physicality by Hassan Hall. Brandon Hill, one of the better tackling safeties in the league. And Jeff Sims throwing blocks down the field. How about this Georgia Tech team? You'd have loved for Hassan Hall to have stayed inbounds. But nonetheless, the big run. Career best 63-yard run for Hassan Hall. And now, if you're Georgia Tech, even if you get stopped on the next three plays, Pitt's going to have a chance with their timeouts to stop the clock because you went out of bounds. But the field goal makes it a tougher climb. What do we have here now? Brent Key called a timeout. Do we have an official stop or Georgia Tech call the timeout before the play clock expired? 137. Timeout. Georgia Tech. That's their third and final timeout of the half. Please reset the game clock to one minute, 40 seconds. Hassan Thank Hall, you. by the way, 157 yards on 20 carries, Roddy. Not by much. I don't know. I thought I saw some green between the heel. It might be on. The, the angle makes it tough to know for sure. But it's not by much. I mean, it's, it's a fraction of an inch, if anything. Well... All the news in Atlanta this week was off the field on Monday. And Brent Key, who played, by the way, was a GA when an interim coach was named when George O'Leary left Georgia Tech and Mac McWhorter coached the Jackets in the Seattle Bowl. Brent Key was a GA. And the first guy he called, one of the first guys he called this week after being named the interim head coach was Mac McWhorter. Yeah who led Georgia Tech over Stanford in an upset at the Seattle Bowl. And here tonight in his debut, he's trying to upset Pitt. Sims trying to get to the near side, breaks away, steps out of another. Now going to race back across. Hallett 
and Sims will go down. Pat Narduzzi calls a timeout with 1.28 to play. First of the night for Pitt in the second half. And Jeff Sims, Taylor, that time went to and fro before taking the slot. Yeah, guys, before taking the field, I was watching him over here on the sideline with his teammates. Remember earlier I mentioned that calm demeanor? Well, it left a little while ago. He was running up and down the sidelines yelling at his teammates, we have to finish. Like you both said, we can't let this one slip through our fingers. And, you know, guys, when we were talking to the coaches this week, I asked them, other than a win, what makes this week a success? And they talked about attacking the day. They wanted to see their guys come out with an assertiveness and an energy. And that absolutely has been showcased here tonight. And like you both have mentioned, confidence surely to be taken from it. Taylor, remember the it's not a win-loss proposition, Roddy? Yeah. Remember that? Yeah. said it's it's not about the result. Right. Exactly. It's about the process. They're very close to getting the result <laughs> through the process. Right. And, and all of a sudden now, Duke comes to Atlanta next Saturday afternoon at 4 o'clock. It's, it's, hey. it's a battle atop the, the coastal or, or near the top of the coastal. Yeah. Here's the snap. Sims going to run to the boundary side at the left, turn the corner, and Jeff Sims get in the end zone. He did. Touchdown, Georgia Tech, with 1.25 to play. This big team in the second half especially has had a really tough time setting edges and keeping Georgia Tech from getting inside. Georgia Tech's done some nice stuff formationally to create blocks. Couple of offensive linemen, one offensive lineman, one tight end out front. Jeff Sims able to get in the end zone and put a punctu punctuation mark on this game. Gavin Stewart will add the point. <laughs> so, with 125 to play in the ball game. It's a 26 to 14 score. And just like we thought, the three touchdown underdog is getting ready to pull off one of its biggest wins, certainly in the short term, and one of its best road wins in a long time. Well, I can, it's the biggest win of the Brent Key era at Georgia Tech, I'll tell yeah, you that. Yeah, no question. Uh, but uh, I think the, the way this team has played, taking advantage of the Pitt mistakes, and Pitt's big mistake in this was not taking advantage of the opportunities right. they had, the interceptions early, and letting Georgia Tech stay in the game where they were able to gain confidence and really outplay Pittsburgh for much of the second half, or really most of the game. Roddy, a team that had not scored in the fourth quarter all year long, and it only had 17 second-half points, has 20 here in the fourth period. The question is, the questions on the defending champ side, on Pat Narduzzi's side, are going to be plentiful. A lot of them are going to be about health. But a lot of them, how do you get this offense to the point where able to move the ball consistently and not shoot itself in the foot as they did with penalties and turnovers? Yeah. A sorely disappointing loss for the Panthers. This is Flemister on the return. Out beyond the 20 and over the 30 goes Sebo Flemister in a big lick there. Time for our Bojangles Big Bow moment. Charlie Thomas could not play in the first half tonight because of a targeting call last week. Roddy, he's been everywhere in the second half. He is. He ha initially had Vincent Davis wrapped up, and then it's punched out by Jalen King, and he's able to take it down into field goal range. That put Georgia Tech head in the ball game. Charlie Thomas has certainly made an impact. He's the best defensive player for the Jackets team, and he's showed it. Here is Slovis off the 32 with a minute 12 to go and floats that one out of bounds. Well, the outcome tonight, sorely disappointing for Pittsburgh. And now Virginia Tech here at Acrisure next Saturday. The question now all week that everyone's going to be asking is who's the best team in the Coastal? Wow. Uh, the way Pitt played today, I mean, you certainly have to ask questions. Jared Wayne, a terrific catch against Samari Walton for a first down. Derek Allen was also in the coverage. But a 
great grab by Wayne, who's been too quiet tonight for Pitt fans like him. Yeah. As you said, a great grab. And chunk plays. That's exactly what Pitt needs to have a hope in this game. Slovis going to throw another one, and Wayne jostled around with Walton a little bit, and that was overthrown incomplete with under a minute to go. And a look at the Panthers list here, Roddy. Boy, tough loss for Scott Satterfield in Louisville today at Carolina in late October. And that game at the bottom of the schedule has been just like a neon light in the coastal now for I'm not sure it is anymore. Yeah, well, it's a good point because this thing is wide open. Slovis with a ton of time. And this is Carter Johnson, the redshirt junior tight end, making the grab inside the 25 with 46 seconds left. And, and it's worth it's worth mentioning when we were comparing stuff in the Costa early on. One of the big things was that Pitt didn't have to play Clemson. Miami did. A lot right. of time coming off the clock here as they sub. Yeah, Pitt's got two timeouts left with 28 seconds left. Slovis may have to make a throw to the end zone here. He'll throw it. Johnson, the catch, steps out of bounds near the 17 ahead of Thomas. I think if you're if you're Pat Narduzzi, in, in that moment with the time running down, as soon as they stop it to sub and you see Georgia Tech meandering its way onto the field, kind of like Pitt did earlier, you got to call a timeout. Save five or six seconds at least there. So with 21 seconds to play. Georgia Tech has 15. Am I right? 15 in the uh, fourth quarter. 15 fourth quarter points. Is that right? No, 17 fourth quarter points. Wow. Late night math. Yeah, it is. Thanks. Here's Slovis. He'll throw for the end zone. And coming back to make the catch is Jaden Bradley. <laughs> So hold the phone here with 14 seconds left. Keaton Slovis gives his receiver a chance, but the catch by Bradley, my goodness, goes up over the defender, KJ Wallace. It gives Pitt, a, gives Pitt some hope. Need an Slovis onside kick and, and a miracle. Slovis with 305 tonight. On 26 of 45. That's his third touchdown, and now the onside kick with 14 seconds left. It's a five point game. We saw him execute one last week, Roddy. <laughs> yes, yes, he did. I don't know that. Uh, I don't know that the bunt, the surprise bunt onside kick is going to work here. And Georgia Tech will surely be expecting it. Keaton Slovis has looked very comfortable in the two-minute drill for 99 yards in the first one, right. right down the field there. That was as efficient a drive as you – it's exactly what they needed. I mean, think about the substitution. If you get the time out there, you probably have 20, maybe 25 seconds left on the clock here. Sure. You still need an onside kick, obviously, but be a different situation. 13th career 300 yard game tonight for Slovis. Here's Sauls now. Just going to let it roll and it went nine. Did it get touched? And it's recovered by Georgia Tech and AC Lee's come up with it. And now Pat Narduzzi has two timeouts, but essentially the ball game is over. They tried the bunt. And it looked like player on the right side. You want those two guys. So the way that's supposed to work is the two guys next to the Please kicker the game are supposed to run seconds. down ahead of the kicker seconds. and yeah. essentially throw blocks that allow the kicker to recover the, the, the onside kick. I didn't get the number, but the player to the right of the kicker was looking the other way when he approached. It, it never, had a sh never had a chance, never had a shot. So Sims. Waits on the ball to be spotted here. They're trying to get the chain set across the way. Go, 
And Jeff Sims is going to touch a knee. And Pat Narduzzi will not use the two timeouts. And Georgia Tech, with all the upheaval in the week, the dismissal of Jeff Collins as the coach and Todd Stansbury as the AD. Brent Key just asked those guys to stack days. And look what happened to him tonight. The most important thing for Brent Key to do was to focus his team on the task at hand that happens between the white lines. The 100 yards, 53 and a third, that's where he needed his team's focus to be, and it absolutely was there. Pitt handed him opportunities, didn't take advantage of their own opportunities, but nonetheless, this was a Georgia Tech team that had not been in close games. They finished today in a close game. It's a heck of a statement for Brent Key in his first time at the helm of Georgia Tech. It's a heck of a statement for this Georgia Tech football team who is so desperate for something good to happen. Tim Salem, who is a former assistant with Georgia Lear at UCF when Brent Key was there, a word with Brent Key and now Taylor with Coach. Thank you, guys. Coach Key, this week was a challenge. A lot of change, a lot of noise. How proud are you of your group and the fact that they came on the road and got a win in spite of all of it? I can't even say. I really can't. You know, Known these guys have had it in them all along, and uh, we just had to, you know, get the get everybody on the same page, and you know, and, and, and they did it. So I, I really I can't say a lot right now, just other than how proud I am of them and, and the coaches, who, you know, went through a lot of things this week, and the coaches that were able to rally these guys together and uh, and, and keep them on one mission, you know, working one day at a time, uh, one play at a time, one practice at a time, in order to get to this uh, to get this time right here. The emotion says a lot about how much you care about this place. We talked pregame and you said, I'm here to be a resource to help these student athletes succeed. As an alum, as an interim head coach, you get your first win, coach. How does it feel? I'm just so happy for these kids. You know, they, they've they've been through a lot the last few years. I'm happy for the kids, happy for the coaches, happy for our alumni base that uh, they can you know, cheer these guys on. But we got a lot of work to do now. I mean, we, we, have to, we, we should not have made it that close at the end. Um, you know, offensively, we got to be able to sustain drives and finish when, when, it, when it's time, uh, and put the game away when it's time to put it away, and uh, not not allow teams to hang around. And you know, and you know, we got to win, but we got a lot of work to do when we get back. And uh, we got you know, we got Duke and coming home in seven days. Your team showed energy. They showed grit, and it seemed they were gaining confidence as the game went on. How can you help them maintain that moving forward? Well, the whole thing we started out with was that. You know, they need to stop waiting around and waiting for things to happen. That they need to make things happen. And I think tonight it was a, it was a step in the right direction of, of making things happen. An incredible night for you, Coach. Congratulations. Thanks a lot. Go Jackets. Taylor, thanks. Roddy, wasn't quite sure what we were going to see out of the old gold and white tonight. No, we weren't. Uh, but I said it to you and Taylor and, and our crew during the week, you expected this team to come out and play hard. Right. Brent Key was, was always going to be able to press the right button to help them get to the place where they could come out and give it their best effort. And he had some things go for him, but they made things happen tonight. This is a talented Georgia Tech team, and with the Coastal that's wide open, who knows, Georgia Tech fans can dare to dream. What a full day of football in the ACC, huh? <laughs> Upsets, surprises, great games. Great to be with Roddy Jones, Taylor Davis, Adam Coppage, our producer, Nick Young, our director. You know what it's time for? ACC Huddle After Dark. Here's JC.